hey, everybody out there, uh, both in the slight future of Twitch, which is delayed just a few seconds, and uh, in the farther future uh, of YouTube and all perpetuity forever, and in the far, far future of this just being beamed directly into your brain mates by whatever horrifying social media exists then. Um, welcome. My name's Pat Rothfuss, and the lovely people here are joining me to play a game, partly because the world is rough and we want to bring good things into your life, and partly to raise awareness of uh, a little charity fundraiser we're doing uh, for world builders where we are running a fundraiser to help us keep the lights on, pay our people um, and things like that uh, in order to support our larger charity work. I'll talk more about that later. And now those of you that uh, sort of make a habit of my streams anyway, you get to, uh, Aaron is going to take over briefly and talk, mm. and I'm going to take off my headphones while I write a tweet rather than just make you all watch me sit here slack-jawed while I obsess about how many characters I'm using. Uh, man, this is the only time I get three hours with Pat, and and then he leaves. So that's where I'm at right now. Everybody out <laughs> there on Twitch. I hate it. Oh, my goodness, Pat, please. Um, thank you so much for joining us for the first game for Geeks Doing Good 20. 22. I am the least interesting person here. I want to introduce you to our very cool friends playing today. So uh, before I immediately throw over to them, I am going to say we are playing a quiet year, a game by Avery Alder here on the stream for the next few days with a rotating cast of guests. It's going to be really fantastic. I will be facilitating some of these games. Pat's going to be in every one. Before you fall into all the splendor of the quiet year. I'd like to direct you to Geeks Doing Good 2022. If you look at our overlay, you can see by going to bit.ly slash GDG 2022. Is my typing drowning out? Fine products. I, oh my I goodness, hope. Pat, I was in the middle of a really I good pitch. I still <laughs> really good pitch. Yeah, you were doing really good, bud. And I, have to, I have to facilitate this game for him? Okay. All right. For this him? Is, this is I I love our guests, and that's that's where I'm gonna throw to right now. Um coming in, coming in hot today. Uh Lexi McQueen, thank you so so much for joining us. Could you please give us uh, you know, just tell us who you are, tell us where we can find you, and uh yeah, go from there. Big time, yeah. Um, yeah, my name's Lexi, otherwise known as the Black Girl Mage. I am essentially someone who enjoys D and D very heavily. Enjoys a lot of like gaming. Um, you can usually find me over on Twitch and on Twitter under the same name, talking games, playing games, and uh, I don't know, having opinions. So <laughs> that's what I do on the internet. <laughs> um, I always love it when people refer to like I enjoy D and D heavily like yeah. i enjoy dr pepper heavily but i also enjoy like destiny and video games heavily i've been yes. there i understand it i get it um everyone knows who pat is and he's writing a tweet right now so uh wesley chu i'm so excited to have you join us uh for today's game why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and uh you've actually got a book and our geeks doing good could you tell us a little bit about your new book do you actually like dr pepper I love Dr. Pepper. Wow, you're like the first person I've ever met who has actually likes Dr. Pepper. Really? I, I used they, to. Used I to. Know, I didn't know they still made that stuff. Anyway. Oh man. <laughs> hey everyone, Mom, I'm Wesley Chu. Uh, I'm a science fiction fantasy author of twelve books, uh, best known for uh, the lives of Tao. Um, I am a, I am a big fan of gaming, but I don't do a lot of it because I have two kids uh, under under six <laughs> right now, so. Really, all, all I do is change diapers and uh, and work. But um, I do have a new book out. It's called The Art of Prophecy, which is the first book of the War Art Saga. And it's kind of like my love letter to wuxia movies or kung fu movies. 
which is scheduled for release August 9th with Delray Books. And I believe it is a World Builders exclusive uh, release. So if you order the book from World Builders, you will get an exclusive signed book plate. I have seen the sketches for that, and they kick ass. Well, I they are rad. I, I, I just like rad. to say... A lot of times, and sorry to, to barge in, but that's me. Um, oh, no, no, that's what you do. Pat. I mean, it's let's fine. be honest with each other. I'm going to do it during the game, so people might as well get used to it now. <laughs> um, I'm ready. As yeah, I know of all the people who won't let me get away with it. Um, uh, uh, Wes, you know, when you write a book, right? Generally speaking, how much say do you get like for like art direction, slash like your cover whatever and you can be honest here uh in this case with, with del rey and this is my first book that i have with them um they gave me a lot of leeway and oh and then i mean i i don't have great artistic taste so what i do is i just like throw a bunch of stuff to the wall and i go i love this stuff half the stuff they'll be like this is stupid and the other half is like this is a great idea and I'm one of those people where I'm all about subject matter expertise. So when somebody tells me this is stupid and they're like they're like part of the marketing team or they're they're, they're the artist, I'm I'm usually pretty good about, you know, letting go of my ego and just be like mm. they're probably right. But in this case, um they gave me a lot of a lot of room to work with. And um and so this is it shows that that Wes is a big deal everybody because publishers don't typically care what authors think and for for the for the most part they are well within their rights because our, you know authors aren't artists you can't see julia nodding but i i can see her <laughs> nodding off on a different thing um but here's the thing when we do one of these book plates we design it in-house with our people and then we bounce it off the author and they get to be as involved if they want and if they want to be hands off they got other things to do we're cool with that but also I kind of pride myself and it's like, hey, want to do a cool art with an artist in your world? And uh, and if you don't like it, you get to say so, which doesn't happen with a cover. You know, <laughs> cover your book. They're like, here it is. And you're like, there's there's no spaceship in my book. And they're like, but the art is very cool, right? We bought, it cost <laughs> us a lot of money. And you're like, <sighs> I, I mean, uh, it's the spaceship is wearing a dress though and i don't understand why and it's like <laughs> we've already sent it to the printer we just kind of showed it to you to be polite and i'm like okay thanks you know um so this is something that i enjoy doing with people and i i i like giving authors the freedom to say whoa nope <laughs> as well as ooh, hell yeah m more dress on that spaceship i never knew that that was my thing before so uh as soon as we have that polished up and good like and and, and as good as wes wants it to be and in the way that he wants it to be we'll be showing that off but also i just want to say if everyone buys those copies before he finishes that well, then you're out of luck. So if you want to trust us, don't trust me, everyone. I'm extremely shady. But Wes, look, look look at Wes. This is the author himself. You got to trust the author's vision. You know, his unique vision brought to, oh, my God, Julia, you're already killing it. I love, <laughs> I love how this is working. Um, did I miss Lexi's intro? Yes, okay. but it's okay. You're here now. I, I was excited for Lexi's intro. Everybody, this is my first time playing with Lexi, and I'm a little nervous, but I already with like me? her so much because sometimes <laughs> I say a stupid thing and she smiles, and then I feel like I'm okay as a person. <laughs> <laughs> That's, my role I, is now redundant <laughs> every single like you could say if you look the camera directly in the eyes and just said i don't know one fish two fish i would probably laugh extremely hard because if my sense of humor is so messed up now i see one word and i'm like damn that's so funny. i i do i do have experience with various improv slash erotic um uh imp versions of dr seuss books um 
That is very specific. It's, uh, well, I yeah. mean, I'm a dad and you can only read Circus McGurkis so many times to a one-year-old before you either go crazy, stop, or if you're me, do a super X-rated version because you think your kids can't <laughs> understand words and then later discover that a one-year-old absolutely understands more than you <laughs> thought. Uh, oh welcome my to the gosh. stream, everybody. Welcome We're doing to the this stream. For charity. For charity, <laughs> one fish, two fish. I'm not <sighs> going to go any farther. Um, you can't give it to him for free. You can't give it to him. Oh, no. For free. no. No. That will be an, a charity add on later. Pat Rothfuss signs Dr. Seuss books and puts a dirty limic, limerick in each one. There, uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Pat. Stretch goals. I'd love to hear you read a dirty version of the Butter Battle book, my favorite Dr. Seuss book, because you know, you, you already know what you would do. I mean, I know you. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. With that, what was that uh, rule that you read off beforehand about a? Uh... Oops. Oh, oh, uh, yeah. So, um, Pat, I mean, this is your stream. This is your show. Oh, I have yeah. like a cool Marvel code name. I'm the facilitator. Ooh. It's kind of like okay. an American Gladiators, like Pyro. That's a Marvel <laughs> character. Uh, but as well, we you really, playing, you really went far back for that one, didn't you? Uh huh. <laughs> okay, Pat was just on a stream talking Marvel for an hour and a half. And I had to sit in the corner with like a sock in my mouth to keep him screaming. <laughs> I'm like, I want to talk about this. And coincidentally, that's a scene from Pat's Dirty Butter Battle book as well. I was well. gonna say, um, Julie, you know, I'm not saying to draw that, but yeah, no, don't. But also now that I've made that joke, please don't draw that. Except for okay. a stretch goal. Uh, we are playing Avery Alders, The Quiet Year, uh, at some point in this stream. Um, as the facilitator, I looked over the rules. I tried to facilitate a nice welcoming environment for all our players, but there's something I want to call out for one of our players. I won't say who, but there is a chapter that has the title Restraint. And the first sentence says, well, we play the quiet year. I, I'm we super into restraint, just to be clear. We God damn it. <laughs> I mean, I'm more, I'm we more into from the free restraining conversations okay. about what to do next. <laughs> We're here till six, huh? <laughs> Good job. <laughs> um, but this is a map drawing game. Our players are going to uh, essentially play as a community rebuilding after the collapse of civilization. Their decisions are going to define the future of this community. And these decisions are going to be added to a map drawn by the lovely and talented Julia Maddalena, which will be ever constantly evolving. This map is going to blend literal cartography with symbols. And hopefully, if Pat doesn't Dr. Seuss it up too much. Uh, we're going to be creating a rich visual record of the land and the people. We just all have to collaborate and steal this and steer this community in the right direction while navigating tensions, trials, tribulations, and dirty Dr. Seuss quotes. Um, uh, in the chat, Black Wings, yes, this is the same game that the McElroys used for Ethersea, mm. except. They were on a podcast, so you didn't get to see the map. Um, and also, rather than hurt you all in, in your brains, we brought in Julia to do the art. Um, rather than you see, like me draw a thing, because some of you have seen that. And mm. as you know, yeah. I once drew a duck in a girl's book at a signing, and then she we cried. We don't do it anymore. She cried. Don't she literally it. cried and was sad and yeah. forever. So, yeah, we have a ringer, an art ringer. So, uh, everybody, now, who has played this game before? I don't think Wes has. I have not. And I, you haven't I've either, listened. Lexi? I haven't, I haven't played it. I've listened before. Okay. I've not played. It is a hoot. And, and Wes, wait. yeah, right. It, it, it's so nice. It's so good. And Wes, I knew that you'd be good for it because, like, this is a game for authors. It's all world building it's all world building. So uh, it sounds like I'm just, you know, like I'm outlining basically is what it feels like. A little I, bit. I listen to it. A little I'm bit. Like, oh, all right. Let's do this. 
Uh, if we're all good, shall we? Oh, shall we begin? I'll, I'll real quick say, hey, everybody, thanks for showing up. But also, we're doing a charity. Um, so in, over there in the chat, um, which I mean, might be, I don't know what direction, I don't know what your screen is like, everyone. But over there, you can go and you can put some money into the charity. If, you know, if you think Wes is really cool and you like the cut of his jib, um, which is a sailing term, by the way, I didn't make that up. That's not Dr. Seuss thing. Um, it's not smutty at all, even though it sounds like it. Uh, then... You can go and buy his book. I've got my book. You can just throw in some money. If you got too much money, everyone, we literally have a tier over there that says, I have too much money. And you can put it into the charity. And then you feel good because here's what we're really selling, folks. Yeah, you can buy a book. But you know that some of that money is going to go towards making the world a better place. And I'm guessing that if you're geeks and you're showing up to watch other geeks play a game that you probably have enough empathy that it is hard to live in the world in the best of days and the best of days are long behind us. Um, and if you're feeling rough and you wish you could make a difference and you don't know how, that's what World Builders is for. You can come in, give us some money, and we make sure that it is used in good ways to run other fundraisers and make the world a better place. So not only do you get the chance to buy some cool stuff. Um, uh, you get big, warm, fuzzy, and 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 those are a commodity these days. Um, the end of my first pitch. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you, Pat, for that pitch. Shall we get on with our quiet year? Let's do, do it. it. Okay. Yeah. So it starts. It starts with me reading an intro, and I I've been preparing for this, and I. No, Pat won't interrupt me. Can I can I play you in? Yeah, could you actually give me some like underscoring? I'm thinking. Can I give something... you some notes before you start? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so. Oh my God, that's the this. title of my autobiography. <laughs> can um, I give you some notes before you start? <laughs> Excuse oh, me. That uh, is a great title. Pat. I know. <laughs> You're like I'm an accidental genius. I just can't help myself. Wow. Uh, I used to travel the country doing theater, Pat, so I will try to take your notes as best I can, but I don't know what direction it's going to go in. I, it was going to be a simple, a simple, uh, this was, I was going to play you in as, hey, hey, can you do it good? Can you, can you read it good? Just start no, I wasn't... with better. Don't, don't start with you doing, start with better. Whatever you were going to do, I want you to do that, but like way better than you were Okay. Actually, but no, I was going to say, I'm going to play you in, but here's how I play you in because I don't do music. Oh my God, Aaron, we could do this with music. We should bring in a musician. We should bring in. Chapter four, restraint. When we play the <laughs> quiet here, we must refrain from freewheeling conversations about what to do next. Um, so I'm, here's how I play you in. Ready? In a world. There, that's all I had. It was a throwaway bit and I really made it longer than it needed to be. All right, committed. so you want me to do it like that? No, I was just, that was going to be my lead in, and then you could do your thing, whatever you wanted to do. So I should do it the way that I rehearsed? Yeah. Okay. For a long time, <laughs> we were at war with the jackals. I hear laughing. Why are you laughing and being serious? That's, Commit. you got to just keep going. <laughs> I'm totally oh. fine with this whole theme that we're building. Okay. Yup. Now, finally, we've driven them all. <laughs> a year of relative peace. One quiet year. Like playing every character with for which surprise. to build. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'll... We'll, we'll get a Nigga Montoya in here. Uh, one quiet year with which to build our community up and learn again how to work together. Come winter. The frost shepherds will arrive, and we might not survive the encounter. This is when the game will end, but we don't know that yet. What we know now is that in this moment, there is an opportunity to build something. That sounds like the intro to Civ Six. 
um, which I'm, I'm really, really into. Uh, so that is the groundwork for our game. We are going to be playing through four seasons in a quiet year. And the game ends when we draw a card from this deck that signals the Frost Shepherds have arrived. In the middle of our stream, you'll be able to see the map of the region. That is what we are going to be working on throughout the course of the quiet year. As we play, we will update this map. Well, we will verbally update it. And Julia, who's good at this, will actually part it up with uh, new discoveries, conflicts, decisions, what have you. Um, we're all going to take turns describing what we want on the map. Uh, we don't have to worry about it. Julia's got it. Map here, rad. Um, I'd like to go over turn summaries real quick, just so we all have an idea of how this works. I will be taking a card off the top of the deck, and that card will direct me to a specific question to ask the player. And then that player will answer it as if they were uh, representing that community. Now, other people in the game can, uh, can discuss this, bring up points, things that they want to say. For the sake of brevity, I think every discussion, Pat, should be at three minutes tops. That's what I'm going to say, three minutes tops. Um, during the course of a game, uh, you'll be able to uh, take an action. One of three things. You'll either discover something new, which you will tell us about. You will hold a discussion, which will open the floor to the other players about a topic of your choice, or you will start a project. So if, for instance, Pat wanted to create the, what would Pat create? A distraction factory. <laughs> that distraction factory might take four or five turns. Um, every turn, it will tick down. And if uh, we start at five and we tick down to zero, that distraction factory has been made and it will be formally put onto the map. Let's say maybe something happens. Pat's distraction factory only gets to two or one. It might still be on the map, but it might not look complete. It, it would be like if you drew a dragon and it just didn't have the bottom teeth. You know, we'll let Julia decide all that for us. Quick, quick, um, quick side. Si oh, hold on for one yes. quick sec. Julia, those three yeah, yeah. things, could you write those right now under resources? Write project, discussion, or... Um, how about this? Put them way down at the bottom, though, because yeah, you'll, you we'll put real resources up at the top. And then by the time we get down to the bottom where we've built up resources, then you can erase that because we'll have had the, that in our heads. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that Sorry, will... can you repeat that? Project resource. Project resource or dis... No, wait. Aaron? Project discussion. Uh, uh, yeah, it's going to be dis uh, discover something new, hold a discussion, or start a project. Right. And so uh, Wes had a, a question real quick too. Yeah, I have a, yeah. I have a plot question facilitator. Um, when you say like the Frost Shepherds are coming, does that mean like, like is that when they're gonna come and we're gonna fight them? Or like, are, we base are they so powerful that we're basically screwed and that we just better make the best out of this last year of our life? Hard to say. I only know what you tell me about the Frost Shepherds. We're going to discover that through the game. But when they come, you want to be as prepared as possible. And <laughs> not, to, not to put too much pressure on you, but we are playing the Quiet Year every day for the next five days. And so the players tomorrow are going to be coming in and seeing what we've done. And they have to deal with that. So... Oh, it's a continuation? It's we, legacy, baby. We, oh, we're Ooh. legacying it. Is this set? Oh, that, maybe that, that's what I thought. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Like we might do some of that. We. The thing is, I also want to give people the opportunity to make their own wildly, whatever stuff. Like, but but I like the idea of some of it being legacy. Um, and also. Uh, if this goes real well and you're not all totally sick of me, we can always come back and do a sequel. I heard that some people do that. We can't do three, though. That's very off-brand for me. The um, quieter year. 
Mm-mm. the quieter year. Yeah. <laughs> did you just say you can't do three? Yeah, oh, that, that was a joke, uh, kind of. Um, my, my 300 hours of frost punk is going to come in my house. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, actually, Aaron, I do have another quick question, too, and it's a real one. Um, because I – this is – I, I played the prototype of this back at a charity oh. event years ago. Um, and so, and also, you know me, I play every, I make it everything wrong and weird, like mm-hmm. just by being a, around it. And then I also listen to the McElroys do this, but they were playing this as a stepping off world building thing into, is this, we are, I mean, they do say the Frost Shepherd. So there's like a point but as we do this, we're sort of describing the catastrophe. We're describe. Was there a catastrophe before that? Now we're recovering from. Is that part of it, or is that just every version of this that I've played? Uh, so this is the version that is in the book. The uh, opening story starts off with, "For a long time, we were at war with the jackals. Now finally, we've driven them off, and we're left with a year of relative peace." Okay. So filling in what the jackals are and what that war is is something that we will be developing throughout the course of the game. Okay. Um, are we committed to jackals? They sentient dogs. I'm not. How about this? Let's let's leave that for 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 a long time. Mm-hmm. Something it, it may or may not be either jackals or called jackals. Now we have a quiet year. I love it when they say the name of the thing in the thing. Mm-hmm. And then then Frost Shepherds, but everything else we get to make up and we can make up. So, okay, cool. I, I just wanted to make sure that I was, if I was going to transgress, I wanted to know the way in which we were going to do it. <laughs> Very cool. It is, uh, so you were at war with TBA, uh, which is so terrible it hasn't been announced yet. Nice. I think that works. I think that's good. Um, one of my favorite things about the quiet year is uh, there's something in the game called contempt tokens. So if you were to disagree with another player, uh, typically if we were playing this in real life, you would have a contempt token. Uh, Pat, I'm going to ask you, how do you want to show contempt in this game? Contempt will essentially show a player that like you disagreed with them in the past. I think we can just mentally take note of it. That probably mm-hmm. is right. We can, uh, Julia. If since we're probably going to be mostly in the middle of the map. Like if I say, Aaron, I can tempt you. Do I just give it As to somebody? Like to do. I mean, um, maybe we she could put something over by your yeah, like something like that. Mm-hmm. Maybe. And is this is contempt accrued because, like, like because we're not playing characters in this world. Is this contempt that one player shows another? I've forgotten this so, mechanic. I think that you get you gain contempt if you do something for the community that might draw ire. Like if if you oh. decide all of a sudden that the community is going to not develop like a farm and everyone else is like, "Well, that's going to screw us over when winter comes." Then they can like I I believe you can choose to give contempt and that can yeah. be drawn on later. So how, how many contempts do I have in my threshold? Like, do I just have like a whole basket of, of contempts I can throw out? Do I have to earn them before uh, I throw them out? Throwing. I'm I'm lo- I'm I'm referring to the to the actual text. Do, 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 do. It doesn't have a limit. So if you've got a bucket of contempt, just throw it at Pat. If anybody's feeling salty, this is the uh, that's the contempt bucket right there that Julie is drawing. <laughs> the, um, the rule book specifically says, if you ever feel like you weren't consulted or honored in a decision-making process, oh. you can take a piece of contempt okay. and put it in front cool. of you. That's, this that's, is how yeah. we express disagreement or tension. Oh, okay. That's a nice mechanic to keep maybe animosity from building in what might be a stressful game. That's neat. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. So do we uh, actually need the visual buttons or not I, what i'll what i'll say is i like the little the little nubbins um so as people accrue them do you want to put in nubbins and then people will see those and just kind of know what they are yeah sure i like yeah i think that's a good mechanism so do we want to 
Cool. Do we want to, are, is that us accruing them or is that what we're giving out? You are placing it in front of yourself to, uh, to show that you feel like you were not honored in that decision-making process. Oh, so Got we it. give it to ourselves. I don't say you did it. You're like, I am feeling mm. contempt. Oh, that's why a much, that's don't... even a better, that's even a better way of thinking of it because that way you're not putting it on somewhere. You're like, I'm mm -hmm. salty. Um, it's like a status update. Yeah. Okay. Nice. It's, you know, it's, it's a tweet. That's what it is. It's, it's the quiet, your tweet. Cool. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah. you can just message me or something. I don't know. I'll just say it. I want to. Okay, great. Contempt. <laughs> yeah, he does oh, this every no. meeting. No. That, that's my content signal right there. Look. Uh, oh, screaming. <laughs> and and real the briefly, I'm sorry, I overtalked yeah. you. Go ahead. Oh no no no, Pat, go go for it. Uh, I, it's so much contempt. worse. Contempt. <laughs> okay, good. Um, uh, real briefly, one other mechanism that isn't necessarily part of this game, but I like to bring into all games where I'm working with people. Um, cause we didn't have it when I was growing up and those early days when D and D was literally and figuratively the only game in town. And it was mostly run by a bunch of confused 13 year old boys. It could suck. Um, but nowadays, uh, there's something that is called, some people do lines and veil. Some people do the X card, but effectively it's a way for people to do improvisational storytelling in a way that is respectful and helps people feel comfortable and safe because when you're making something together, you're emotionally vulnerable and stories are important to us. And what this means is uh, at any point during the game, anyone here, Julia, Aaron, um, you can uh, throw up your hand and say, um, X card, and normally, if you're playing at a table, there's a literal card you can touch. Um, and then you, and then at that point, you say, uh, "No, nothing, nothing about, uh, nothing about a plague." You know, like I'm a little rubbed raw in that particular area. Um, and then we immediately and without discussion stop doing that thing, um, and. Additionally, uh, before a game, there's a mechanism that I've heard some people say, uh, lines and veils, that's things that we don't want in the game at all, or things that we're okay being in the game, but maybe we just sort of want it a little bit like off screen instead of directly on screen. Um, uh, so I'll lead off with my common one, not... I'm okay with a little peril involving children, but harm to children, it's not my bag. Um, so I'd love it if we, you know, I'm not saying no, never, but I am sensitive to that issue. So uh, throwing that out there. Anyone else have any that they'd like to add with the knowledge that you can just do it as we go if at any point you're uncomfortable? <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll second the one about kids, and you know, I, like, I think I'd like to add a, like sexual violence or anything of that sort. Ding ding, I'm in for yeah, it. Third. Yep. Yeah. Um. Uh, and I said this before, but uh, animal death, please no. Yeah. I, I would not like that. Um. Yeah. Uh. So, and by animal death, we're sort of meaning like pets. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I'll kill a chicken, like. You keep saying that, and I don't know why. <laughs> it's foreshadowing, Eric. It's foreshadowing. Lexi's got my back when here. When we play the quiet year, we must refrain yeah, from the chickens are messy. Can we just get that on a shirt? Yes. I want a, a, just a t-shirt that says restraint. <laughs> Contempt on the back, uh, restraint on the front. Yeah, I, I, would, I would pay a lot for a shirt that just said contempt. <laughs> yep. That's all I'm saying. Yep. <laughs> Stretch goal. Stretch goal. <gasps> oh boy. Oh <sighs> boy. <sighs> okay. Um, what I will say, just doing the visuals. If any of you guys want to chime in, I am not precious about, you know, my vision coming through here. If you guys have ideas or directions you want it to go into, by all means, chime in. I'm happy to change things as we go. Cool. I will also speak up for me, and it's like. 
I'll say, go wild. Like anything you want to do, like freaking make yourself happy. And if it's off the rails, then that's where I love to live. Brad. Hell yeah. Already been here. <laughs> okay. This deck of cards represents our quiet year. Each suit is a season. Uh, spades is winter. Clubs is autumn. Uh, diamonds is summer. But we are going to be starting in spring with hearts. At some point in winter, we're going to draw the king of spades. That is when the TBA, I caught it. That is when the TBA arrive and the game will immediately end. I've shuffled these beforehand. I don't know where the king of spades will arrive. Well, once we get to winter, could be the first card, could be the last card. We'll see. Um, but that is just to say we might not get through the entire deck because of the TBA. But, but Does anyone have any questions before we go further? Uh, this is just mechanical. You can't shuffle the whole deck. We're doing season, 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 right? Like Shuffled all the different suits, and then they tell you to stack the suits on top of okay, each other. Okay, cool, right. Way. That would be, I mean, we've, we've sort of sold this. Re if the first card off the deck is that king, we're going to, like, that's, that's a, we're going to have to really <laughs> we lean. We did it, folks. Yay. <laughs> we speed <laughs> run quite a year. Roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, something I like to read from the book, because uh, I think this kind of sets the stage. When we play The Quiet Year, we do not control specific characters or act out scenes. Instead, we all act as abstract social forces within the community. At any point, we might be representing a single person or a great many. This is a story about social forces and their impact on the land rather than being about specific individuals. At the same time that they're playing as the community, we're also looking for opportunities to introduce new and interesting challenges into the story. It's our job to make sure that there are always difficult decisions to be made and uncertainties to be explored. As we introduce interesting challenges for the community and then figure out how to address them, tensions will emerge that ultimately reveal the character and future of our community. Cool. Cool. All right, rock it. Good. Cool. Uh, before we dive, before we get into the first card, uh, let's just establish a general landscape for the map. Uh, this is going to begin with a brief discussion about the general terrain and habitat. This can be as simple as someone saying, what about the community being on the side of a cliff? Or what if they were in the Arctic uh, and other people agreeing? Does anyone have an impulse that says, this is where we should start off. I think we should be near a volcano. I was about to Rad. say in between two volcanoes. I'm not even lying. Okay. <laughs> That's nuts. I, I, I hear yes. double volcano. Yeah. What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to okay. think about it. No, no, it's fine. Double volcano. What could go wrong? Yeah. Um, next, since, well, we, since we have settled. Oh, Pat, Pat, uh, you had a thought. Are we on an island as well? Oh, I didn't think I about that. that until I saw the, the Julia was like did a did a blue, and blue, I'm like, oh, yeah. you do end up with that's how islands happen. Do we want that or? So we're in like Tahiti right now, which I'm kind of okay with. <clears throat> like a an island sounds it. Either an island or like a large landmass similar to like, I don't know, like Iceland, Greenland, where it's just like there are defunct volcanoes everywhere. How about uh, archipelago? So a couple islands, mm -hmm. a couple islands, but only two. Yeah. Uh, only only like there's there's two with volcanoes um, and, and the rest TBA. Love that. Well, no, we don't know about the TBA because they could arrive at the end of winter. <laughs> um, big Krakoa vibes for people that love the mm. current X Men run. I'm I'm really really into this. Lexi, you know what I'm talking about? Listen, I'm trying to catch up so I can get there because it sounds so amazing. But yes, you are in for a ride. Hellfire Gala is this week. Uh, cool. So we're good with this as our starting area. Yeah, a couple right. of islands. Yeah. Are, are the volcanoes active or are, they, are we going to make them 
I think Not, we'll determine that as we go. Yeah, right. yeah. All right. Uh, because before we can determine whether or not they're active, uh, each player is going to name an important resource for the community, something we might have either in abundance or we might have in scarcity. We'll name all three, and then we'll pick one uh, to become the scarce resource. So uh, if anyone has one, they can just pop it off and say it, and then we'll just go through the rest of the players. Or a calcum. It's an alchemical metal that uh, that uh, people used to try to make. Uh, it's vaguely related to the philosopher's stone. It was the big thing. If you made or calcum, it was supposed to be like big magical mojo. Man, I'm gonna I'll, need I'll some spelling. Yeah. I mean, uh, hey, chat. Oh, just put O. Oh. oh. I was gonna say cantaloupe, but <laughs> I love cantaloupe too. Done, done. Uh, it's weird because I'm between like shelter, so like trees, almost having a lack of trees. Maybe it's all like black sand or rocks, and it's hard to Ooh. live. Um, or maybe we have an over abundance of trees, um, or salt, which is very weird year around. Oh, the ocean. yeah. So that but that could be super interesting. Oh, I love Maybe salt. Not. I love salt yeah. in there as a resource. Like mm -hmm. When you say resources, can I say something like like an armory of old tanks? Literally anything is in bounds. Hope can it, be it a could resource. Be it yeah. Could be hope. It could be love. It could be the desire to sing and dance. It could just be musical it's theater, true. wants and dreams. The musical episode of A Quiet Year. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, boy! Let's not go, let's not go that way. <laughs> well, yeah, I think I, I like salt. Salt is so good. Salt. salt is good. Okay, so now that we've, oh, now that we've I should have said like white white goo cows or something. Shoot! No, no, no! Cantaloupe is still change it. Cantaloupe is great. It's obviously also the scarce one because it's not cantaloupe. Can't not elope. It's oh. it's cantaloupe. Can not elope. Yep. I that was can't the joke I was literally making, Aaron. You can't make it and interrupt me making the joke you I was can't in the middle. Yep. Elope make. Also, they're a beautiful animal, the cantaloupe. Um they uh they they frolic. They they Grants. can they and they, they are unbounded in in their, their joy. They they leap any fence. Um Kant is short for Cantor, of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, sorry, it's a philosophy resource. It's the cantaloupe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it that soon. No, it's it's the cantaloupe. Two of their legs are shorter. Oh my, okay, no, I'm calling this because two of their legs are shorter and that means they are suited to being on the side of a volcano because it's a slope and Sweet. they're if they're on regular land they can't to one side yeah Wait, so they can only move in one direction yep up that's why they're so scarce it's a real shitty evolutionary thing um, <laughs> one, one second are they doing a second i just made myself a... lightheaded with this bullshit i just did and they taste like sea bass there we go. Oh my god! And they're delicious. They've been overhunted, and it's easy to hunt them. Sea bass is the most delicious thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So is that our? What were you going to say, Aaron? I, I was going to ask Pat's shirt size because I want to get a black shirt when, with white letters that just says "restraint." <laughs> <laughs> is so. Which but one I is our? Do that. Yeah. Which, which one Sadly. is the abundant one? Oh. I would guess salt. Okay. But it could be interesting if it wasn't salt. Right. Is, is, the, is the salt easy to get out of the ocean? It could be a difference between, and also it need not be just like table salt. Regular tables. Then yeah. Like, yep. like it, it could be like, cause real, and, and so, man, Lexi, this is great, but also you, you fucked up because like I'm weirdly into salt. Like, I'm ready. Um, like uh, clip that sea, sea salt 
sea like real sea salt that they don't mm-hmm. like harvest and then refine is only like 84% sodium chloride. And the rest of it is like literally every mineral you need to live. People wow. used to prescribe salt water as medicine because like if you have a, an electrolyte problem or whatever, like salt, like, but maybe what comes out of the ocean, maybe something happened to the ocean. And so the salt I that comes feel out like of we're the getting ocean further ahead into the game before we've we've done some of the stuff. We're just defining doing, resources. You, uh, we have to define which one's in abundance. We don't have to. That's true. We don't. Nature. We don't have to true, nail down true. everything okay. about the salt. I, I can't stop staring at Julia's like the way she jots the volcanoes. I'm all like, yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> that'll take me like nine hours. To draw right there. <laughs> uh, I forget. Do you guys want them to be active? still that's we up haven't in the air. decided yet okay yeah. okay just making sure that wasn't said or not um do we want or a kelcom to be kind of main it's like kind of mainstream not too in supply not too out of it so like salt or cantaloupe it's gonna be one of the <laughs> or do we want or kelcom to be it would the be thing that our society is based around it would be kind of funny if the, it's like ah yeah or kelcom but give me that Give me that sweet, 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 sweet salt. Yeah, right. Give me that sweet, <laughs> sweet salt. I know I... what the title of the YouTube video is going to be. Yes, Wes. <laughs> what do you think? What are you? Are you vibing with that? I'm sorry. I was, I was staring at her drawings. Um... No, you're good. <laughs> are you good with salt the being sweet, sweet salt, like, like sweet and sour chicken, but it's or or calcum well, being in being... abundance means yes. means that like this is a potentially like a wildly magical place. Wait, yes. Don't we have to hunt 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 the I came the, the O that's climbing on the it's volcano. It's a material. It's a oh, material. It a, which which one's the one with the, with the uneven legs? That's the cantaloupe. Oh oh, that's my that's mine. Okay, there we go. Yes, we gotta hunt those. Okay. So over the course of the game, I think we're going to discover why some mm-hmm. of these resources are in fact scarce. If salt is the one that's abundant, this map and, and the way that we tell this story are going to inform why these things are scarce. Maybe, mm-hmm. you know, we haven't discovered it yet. Maybe we've used it all up. Maybe we built an entire apartment complex out of salt or cantaloupe. Who's to say? But we will discover that over the course of the game. Pat, make a note. We need to make a hotel made of cantaloupe. It's true. I'm super down for that. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, so we're like... the cantaloupe is in is a scarcity. Yes. Um mm-hmm. that that is a, a rare but valuable um and the salt is in abundance. Okay. So with that, the setup is done and we will proceed into our turns. Does anyone want to go first? If we started with Lexi and went top down, top down. All right. Let's do it then. Lexi, I have pulled for you the five of hearts, okay. which means do, do, do. Lexi, there is a disquieting legend about this place. What is it? Disquieting legend. I think we're moving towards an alchemical, magical world. Um, I think that the legend has to do with... uh, I think that the legend has to do with each island actually being a thing like being an elemental or being something that could awaken um and if you mistreat the land then it will awaken the magic that is uh kind of fervent in this area will turn off and be like drawn into the power of these elementals so you have to treat the land well or else I love that. Super, super into that. Yeah. yeah. I think that'd be uh, super dope. Uh, awesome. Love it. Uh, we don't have any dice to adjust. So now you must take an action, which to remind you is either discover something new, hold a discussion, or start a project. Hmm. 
Um, I think it'd be useful to start. Mm, let's discover something. Let's discover something. All right. I think in that case, you simply say, you like it's say what found. you want to discover and you just name it and then it's part of the map. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. I want to discover, or I would like for us to discover uh, an area called the Five Points. Okay. Okay. Is it? I, I love that you described uh, a place. Uh, also, it can be a situation. It can be a problem or an opportunity. Oh. Bit of both. I love the oh. five points, though. I don't want to steal any thunder because I love that. There's a place in Chicago called Five Points. Yeah. Um, um, I live right there, actually. I used that's to. amazing. Hell yeah. Um, okay. Okay. I want to just, oh my gosh. You said it can be a problem? Yeah. Yeah. I would love to see the harvesting of salt go backwards, like some sort of issue around how the way that the society right now is harvesting salt okay. because it's in surplus. Um, maybe it's called like, ah, uh, is, is the salt harvested in a traditional sense with like, you have, uh, effectively you have salt beds and the ocean brings it in and then the sun dries it out and you harvest you harvest the salt like that yeah and so uh if that's how it's then what would the problem be that would start complicating that if we have too much salt because it's in abundance salt actually is poisonous then to like farming the land it's not good for most plants if there's too much salt in the earth. So we need to prevent the salt from coming in. Yeah. Like what oh, if what if we, yeah. they keep expanding the salt flats? Mm -hmm. Because maybe this is an export. Maybe this is a resource. Um, because we have a bunch of water, a bunch of flat place, and a bunch of sun. And so this mm -hmm. is easy for us to make. And we can trade it. But, but then as we've expanded it, it has you know, created, it's like the, it started to poison the land a little bit around yeah. those flats. Yeah. We had to I love that. that land. We had to I think that, that, I think the event or this uh, circumstance is called the seeping. Oh. And it's essentially the, the just seeping. how the salt starts seeping into the soil and kind of riddling it with terrible things. Is it is that a man-made thing or is it just nature kind of like pushing salt on us and we got to figure out how to stop? Oh, oh, geez, wait, dope. wait, wait. How about is five points? It's the group of like environmentalists who have banded together because there's a bunch of theories about is this man-made? Is this mm -hmm. the will of whatever? Like if there's a religious thing going on. And they're like, you know what? It doesn't matter. We need to get together and stop this. So five points is is effectively, like, for lack of a better term, like either freedom eco-fighters or eco-terrorists, depending on what side of the debate you're on. Yeah. Led by five. Led by five oh. leaders in the community who all work together to try to stop the seeping. I think that's what we're discovering. Yep. <laughs> we're discovering that. Oh, man. Anything named the seeping is just terrifying. It's terrifying. Uh, but like, I love it. I'm going to wake up in a dead sleep at 3 a.m. Just be like, the seeping is here. My wife is going to be like, you keep doing this. Please start come dumping out all your table salt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pat, I believe that brings us to you. So I'm going to card Ace of Hearts. Pat, what group? has the highest status in the community. What must people do to gain inclusion into this group? Um, hmm. You tend to either have, you have status 
because you have power. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, honestly, it kind of comes down to that or you're providing something that other people can't provide. I think that there's a group of people who hunt the cantaloupe. Um, and but because they're so rare. Um, I would I would argue that maybe they're almost I don't want to say that they're almost mythical, like everyone's like everyone's heard of how good they are, but they were over hunted and, and everything. And so now they're only up in the higher reaches of some of these hills. And, you know, if you live in a place like Wisconsin, geography is kind of a non issue because it's flat as a table because we've been scraped clean by glaciers many many times but in places with like a lot of active up and down geography and forest and it's not industrial like walking a mile is so you just don't you know and mm -hmm. so like getting into these areas and hunting um i think those people are kind of venerated is those hunters um like a fruit sherpa yeah. 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 I, I was gonna say contempt because I just imagined cantaloupe with feet and legs, but you, you made it more real. That's great. Well, I mean, um, literally these are it's not a fruit. These are animals. I have I felt like I was very clear about the cantaloupe or animals. And to, that was not a joke, everyone. I want they go they're on the mountains. They well, two of their legs, they're hunters. Would you like to discover something new? I would Hold like to discover <laughs> or start a project. Okay, you know, okay, you know what? I'm going to do this inside the bounds of the game. I'm <laughs> going to you say that as if like I'm going to do you a favor and follow the <laughs> rules of the game I'm playing. <laughs> I will I'll say um there's long been long have our people told the stories of the cantaloupe. You know, and and yeah. and Therefore, and, and there's this group of people who swear the cantaloupe exists and they're and and it's it's weird because they're revered. They're sort of like they're they're guides. They know the wilder parts of their they're sort of like whatever the cool, sexy, adventuresome version of a Norwegian bachelor farmer is, um, which is they are they are loners. They're whatever. But. Everyone's like, but there's, yeah, maybe once there were these, the, the cantaloupe beasts that everyone said was so delicious, but, and they're like, you know what? And they finally, there's a project. They started a project and we're like, it is true. And we're going to catch one and bring one back. So that's their project They're They are, you know, effectively, this has been the, the white stag for for at least generations everyone's grandpa says he tasted some and now they're like you know what they're real we're gonna bring one back okay all right so you're starting a project based on what pat has said about this project we need to decide we need to assign it how long it will take to complete either one to six weeks how long do we think it would take to Catch a finish this yeah, I would say six. It is hard. This is you're catching a unicorn. Yeah. Okay. Six weeks. Yeah, let's do it. And so under resources, Julia, you can put. Uh, and now these need to be spelled different. This is. Uh, they're named after. Emmanuel Kant, uh, who was the first. <laughs> yes. Uh, and um. so it's a K. And no, 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 the, the, that's just okay. regular, that's just regular cantaloupe. <laughs> now we're looking for a new resource also called cantaloupe that I'm bringing into the game through legitimate means because I will not let this idea you die. You did it. Canterlope. Canterlope. Can't, although typically it's spelled with an apostrophe that is represented by a glottal stop that I will require everyone to use. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, no, okay, I take it back because I, I can't do that. Okay. Because this in every work meeting. I, yep. Thank uh, you, Lexi. Well done. <laughs> I, I, I got it. Well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> Just for drawing purposes, what I'm hearing is that this is a 
a deer kind of on two legs, kind of. No, or it's it that its left hand legs are shorter because it's uh, built to leg. it's to it's mm-hmm. left side on the left side. It goes around a mountain. This isn't a hard concept, everyone. I feel like chat's with me because it's on a slope. These cantaloupes. Are they all born going the same direction, or do some go this one direction and others go another direction? It's like no, that would right be here. a that'd be a slantelope, and those have been disproven ages ago. Oh, we we killed those yeah. already. That's yeah, fine. yeah, those are gone. Also, they're they gross. Were gone before it got they here. taste so bad. Tastes like chicken. Turkey. Yeah, yeah. worst meat. They Ooh. taste the opposite. Oh. No, those are no. Wait, wait, wait. Slantelope. Wait. No, no, no. Those are those are uh, wit, witter. I want to make a joke about witter shins, but I'm not fast enough. No, well, they are. They're winter shins because their shins were. It's, mm. but they're gone. Wait, they're not. You in are the, quickly becoming the human source of knowledge for this. The I'm mantelope, sorry. So thank you. The, yes, I'm the man. Yeah, uh, the end. Moving on to Wes. <laughs> Moving on to Wes. All right. <laughs> uh, I pulled your card, Wes, and the question I have for you. How old are the eldest members of the community mm. and what unique needs do they have? A good question. The oldest members in the community are 45 years old. When you turn 50, we do that Logan's Run thing <laughs> where we're like, thank you for your service. Gotta get out. You're gonna feed us for a few more. No, no, we're not, we're not, let's not go there. Let's not go there. But so yeah, so oldest members are 45 and they require at the time they reach 50 to continue on living, they need to eat the brains of the cantaloupe. Mm-hmm. I wait, I, I do love that where nowadays everybody only lasts till 45 because there's some sort of deficiency and we hunted those to extinction and everyone's like, nah, people just only live to 45 and that's all bullshit. God, I love that. Okay, yeah. That's so good. That's so good. I'm for that. <laughs> and they're, and that's yeah, why they're- dark real quick. That's why they're uh-huh. going. Oh, I will say, uh, Julia, can you put six next to the canterlope? Because that's how many weeks the discovery mm. will take. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm also keeping track back here. Don't oh, you okay. worry, Pat. Don't you? I got my eye on you. Also, as somebody who is- 49, this just got real fucking dark, <laughs> just to say. <laughs> uh, so now now that we've uh, now that we've brought that into the game, Wes, do you want to discover something new, hold a discussion, or start a project? I want to start a project. So Hell I have, yeah, a, let's I have do a theory it. that like I'm a lazy dude and I feel like walking through the jungles of an island is gonna suck. So the way we travel long distances is by um, hang glider. But since the world has ended, the only fabric that is light enough yet can support hang gliding is cantaloupe fur or skin. So it's all legacy, like, like what leather. we had from back in the day? Right. So we have all the cantaloupe skins that for our current gliders, but... They're getting old and we're running out and they're and we don't have any more cantaloupes. That is so good. Can can that be one of the things that sets the hunters? I we do need a better name for those hunters. Um but like they traditionally would have some of these, and that's part of how they would go out and try to find them because it's so crenolous, which oh, is a they word ride around the volcanoes and they shoot at the cantaloupes. Yep. Oh, they play off the thermals from the lava. So cool. Oh, yep, yep. That's it. We did it. That's dope. That's really dope. Riding that air in order to hunt. It almost makes me think, like, I was trying to think of names for the hunters. And in my brain, my brain came up with, like, the markers. Because I think, like, it would take you one marking to go around the volcano to figure out where it is. And then you come back the second time and immediately, like, that's how you hunt them and and also also like that's why these people are the highest status Mm. because these are these are the sports stars they don't bring home cantaloupe anymore but it's like everybody here is johnny speed and it's like he comes out and he's like yeah and he's got all of his endorsements not not like that but the cool version of that on this island is he's like then he flies around and all the kids are like fuck i want to be johnny speed when i grow up and fly a glider 
but like, but it's in, in his canter suit. He canter suit. The thing is, <laughs> there's a limited number. There's literally only so many, mm-hmm. and it's dead man's boots. You can't be one without the glider and or is it just gliders or is it suits or you got to have one or the other or is it everyone has their own fucking flavor mm. like some everyone of it is has. like that flying squirrel suit some of them are hang gliders everybody has a different deal it's like those red bull competitions where everybody designs their own kind of yeah, hand oh, light yeah. Suit for gliders I think also it'd be interesting because when there's that pressure on the younger generation to be like, hey, you could be this when you grow up, that would also give more pressure to like finding these cantaloupes or finding cantaloupes in general and from the, the younger generation. And the kids. Like, One day I always wanted to be like that. It's the cool version of going snipe hunting. It's not like yeah. you trick your friends. They're like, we're going to go. You know, someday I'm going to leave this little one horse town and I'm going to oh. find a cantaloupe and we're all going to go there together and we'll do it and we'll be marked together. We'll share yeah. that and we'll, yeah. So yep. if you kill a cantaloupe, you become one of those people. But if you don't, then you then you get relegated to like salt duty. Yeah, mm-hmm. like that's that's your, that's your way out. That's that's effectively congratulations. You're a streamer now. Um, <laughs> you're you're a streamer that makes money as opposed to just you know somebody who's out there hoping. Um, also, yeah. also, uh, I will say, uh, these folks die all the time because, mm-hmm. like. You only get to screw up once and then like, oh, no, your bones. So some of the people who go out hunting, you might actually find like because if if they go out and don't come back. I mean, hopefully they're, they're kind of tracked. They go out in teams sometimes or they're being observed. But there have been people who have gone out and not and come back. Uh, and they didn't come back. So yeah. they're like, maybe we're not going to, like, cantaloupe don't exist anymore. That's just whatever. But we can go find, you know, like, Johnny Speed's suit because it's been 20 years. He's he's not living on the mountain. He's bones somewhere, and I want to go get his suit. Every yeah. suit is personalized and has history now. Yep. Uh, so in the interest of time, also – Johnny Speed's bones is now just like a point I, on the map for me. I, that's uh, exactly what I was starting to do. Well, well done, Julia. Uh, how many weeks do we think it will take to complete this cantaloupe gliders project? Well, well, hold on. Is Oof. what is the project now? Because we kind of went off on a world building, Jake. Is the project a substitute for the 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 glider, or is the project to go I'm find to find an alternative? way to build the gliders now or i, I, I mean I, I was thinking more along the lines of like everybody builds their own suit it's very personalized but in order to launch yourself into the air you need like like launching points or like ramps or something so to build a network where you can fly all over the island you need places you can like go from point a to point b take off and land so and, they already exist. The gliders already exist. It's just right. creating well, places for that. actually actually how about this because this means if we have these the, the 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 marked right mm-hmm. um then i i'll say they're they're this weird upper class high high status people but there's how many should it be like 17 of them left mm-hmm. after all these years yeah but wes because everyone thinks of moving around in this way it's developing like there's regular gliders and of course if you have you could just have a regular glider and then a launcher, and then you can fly like one of the marked, you know. And so this it would be the development of effectively a mass transit that will like scootle you around with just like, you know, like, cat- like catapults that launch people. Right? Yeah. Okay. Love that. Love so that. How many weeks? <laughs> is this all over the island, or just like is this a an interstate? It could just be from the one volcano to the other, too. I think we have a few points, and we need more points to really fully cover the entire island and, like, make it easier for cantaloupe hunters to uh, to do their job. Can I suggest a network. five points? Oh. Uh, oh! Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> bring it back. Perfect. Yeah. How many weeks? Uh, yeah. Eight? <laughs> Uh, that's like that's that's 
I mean, they already exist. So we already know. So this we already, great, this we already know built. how to build them. We just need to actually get to the points. I'd say three or four. Yeah. To yeah, make the through. catapults, though, make them safe. Fight's got to be at least four. As four. Four. Works. <laughs> I'm down for four. <laughs> All right, four. It, yeah, Pat speaking as if he's done this before, which I don't know. Maybe you have. <laughs> I don't Do know anything doubt. about your life before author, but this is who you were, and you're just now telling us your history. Um, Lexi. Okay, told... so uh, I'm sorry. You you keep going. I know, Aaron, you're keeping track of the turns and how many weeks have gone by. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Lexi, I pulled for you the king of hearts, which okay. means the question I ask is, A young boy starts digging in the ground and discovers something unexpected. What is it? Oof. <laughs> Discover something unexpected. Uh, Pat, with Orichalcum, is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. Orichalcum. Uh, what was missing from Orichalcum to make it something that was like active did they ever find like oh we just needed this one final thing or like even if it was just like we need life essence we need traditionally it was like an alloy made from gold silver copper um in a very specific way and then it would become it's kind of like the vibranium of the ancient mm -hmm. alchemical texts in our world um so it could be like it could be that this exists in abundance and people use it, but it's all from before instead of us making it, in which case maybe there could be a, a cache of it or it could be a, a, a different recipe for it or, you know, or a way to, I don't know. I don't know what's yeah. yeah. I mean, if does the Oracalcum already exist in our society right now? I think right because now I that's the thing that, is in regular, it's not in abundance, it's not in short supply. There's just orichalcum. Is, is it a raw mineral right now? Or is it like the orichalcum from like, what, like machinery le left over that we need to like salvage? Like refined. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm thinking oh. like this little boy begins to dig and starts finding something that when it reacts to the orichalcum creates a really valuable, really, oh, I, I'm trying to think. No, what if, what if um, the orichalcum we have is effectively like, because uh, it doesn't need to be, it's like, what if this is something that we mine out of the volcanoes? It's a mineral that shows up there, but it is raw and we lost the ability to refine it. So we trade it or we use it, but it's not great. What if he discovers like the ruins of a refinery from a previous, like before it was buried in volcanic ash? Yeah, okay, so this little boy discovers a tool, like one tiny tool, it's a shape never seen before, brings it home to his parents, and that spans an entire like excavation team and they discover these, how, how the tools work with the orichalcum and also how they can modernize the process of refining it. So it changes the whole industry of like trading it out to yeah. keep it at home and mess with it and see what we can do with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. into that. I'm into it. I'm into that. Um, where, uh, we should put it somewhere on the map though. That Yes. That, uh, that like right most uh, easternmost coast almost. Do we, as a civil, as a settlement, occupy the entire map right now, or do we actually have a little like area that we live in where? That's true. That's, That's a fair question. I kind of thought of us as being all over the island, but maybe we're just. Oh, we have been at war. What if we have a year where us a settlement or two? Yeah. Like one on each island, and we're kind of separated. Or we could play into the five points and have five different settlements, and that's what makes up the five points. Yeah, is yeah. The, there's five different settlements. The leaders from each settlement come together to try yep. to solve the and issues. That's why we need a highway network. That's cool. Back yeah. Yep. 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 Perfect. Okay. So yeah, I think there's probably two <clears throat> on the leftmost island, and then three kind of like one near the coast, or like the 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 seeping point, 
and then another we, yeah what if we have rain. one over water one point over water oh yeah that's kind of cool like oh in that yeah central yeah area is kind of cool yeah in that bay right right yep. where you put it oh uh, actually i was thinking in that little thing that looks a little bit like a bay on the edge yeah where it's oh, like that's cool now either that's a current settlement or it used to be a settlement um and those people are displaced um but they still maintain an identity as being from either that, that maybe like an old town that was on the water or that it sank or something yeah love that i'm gonna have to start enforcing the three minute rule a little bit more aggressively <laughs> absolutely uh, this is this but is no, our new we're, all good. we're just gonna do this forever i need both of you back every day this week so we can continue to build this world forever i'll, I'll be here um, um so then discussion start a project discover something um uh, what does discussion look like i'm sorry this can be like one minute long i won't make it last no long. no 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 D discussion is very cool and you know what i think is cool about it the specific rules one of the three action types is hold a discussion you can choose to open with a question or statement Starting from you going clockwise, each player gets to weigh in once with a single statement of one or two sentences. If you opened with a question, you get to weigh in last. A discussion never results in a decision being made. Everyone weighs in, and then it's over. <sighs> and so a lot of times, like, you can speak up as yourself as sort of this like genus loci that we are sort of creating this world or you can mm -hmm. say as a person in the community you speak up on like ah, as old codgery bill hey i'm johnny speed and i think this or whatever johnny speed is is mm -hmm. there's so much lore uh but for julia every discussion is tied to a situation on the map so okay. when the discussion ends we're going to want to mark that situation on the map okay um okay and then I think that the kid found the tool near the uh, near the bay community, some place mm. that was it, it's like the bay, which might have been an abandoned community settlement, and then the seeping. It's like a place you're not really supposed to go to, but kids, of course, hang out there. I feel like we should start a discussion. Um, let's start. A discussion. Yeah, let's do that. The question I will ask. Um, and the question is just an abstract entity asking this question and then we all respond. Um, the question I will ask is, how is Orichalcum going to affect us and how should we moderate it? Is that too broad? No, I think, I think so, that's, I think that's, that's good. That's good. Okay. Boy, and this is my personal challenge. One statement, one sentence. One to two, I think. One, one or two sentences. One or two sentences. <clears throat> uh, like like a long tweet, Pat. You have two hundred and eighty characters. <laughs> Boy. Um. I'm Jenny Speed, <laughs> granddaughter of. Oh no, not Jenny! Uh, granddaughter of the legendary Johnny Speed, who has gone to the mountain, and I think or Calcum is ruining our society and taking us away from our traditional values, and this will just make it worse. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> I'm Tiger Boy. <laughs> That's, I got so far. That's it. Or Kelkum. I'm Tiger Boy. The end. Yeah. Everyone's like, woo, Tiger Boy. <laughs> Cantaloupes love to lick or Kelkum. Oh. And it has made cantaloupe hunting much easier when we have a good stockpile of, or of or Kelkum. That's the statement. Um, my name is, uh, Jessica, Sp what, Jessica, what is it? Speed? 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 Oh, no. 
And I think that we should capitalize and monetize the Orichalcum because there are so many of us who can benefit from using the Orichalcum possibly against our enemies. I'm seeing... That's all I'll say. Jenny Speed, it just became very punk rock in, in opposition to you. And I'm seeing you in a business I'm suit and she's staring PA daggers. Yep. Like, just like, yep. how, d- how dare you? How d- dare you? PTA mom over here. Oh, boy. I <laughs> uh, love that discussion. But I have a question for Pat because I pulled his card. Pat, this is something I ask you pretty much every day. Where does everyone sleep? Well, you know, everybody, Hammock, Hammock. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to do a callback to somebody used the expression looking for that. O. Um, and so now I'm going to bring it back to that. I'm going to suce it up, folks. Um, I'm going to say this is a sex positive society. Yes. Uh, of which we only kind of have distant memories and myths uh, because the last of them real died out kind of before living memory existed here. Um, But I will say people, I will say it's, it's probably a little different in each community, but it is natural for, oh, what I'm going to pull in like the old Germanic longhouse because like you needed a structure or you would freeze to death in those winters, right? So it's like Beowulf style. Oh, but it's not because of the environment. It's because they've been at war and they've been at war for so long. Everybody sleeps inside these big structures, but like maybe it's like a manor house for a a big family or farm, but it's very extended. Everyone sleeps in the main hall but also like and and but if i knew if i said that everyone would be like but like where do they bone if everyone's always sleeping in the same place it's like you know what it's not a big deal like not a not a big deal to bone yeah they're like hey and you know like it just it happens and people are like just don't wake me up or like or it's like you know some people snore some people fuck you know like and probably not at the same time you say like let's call the whole thing oh at the end the end that's my answer let's call the whole (laughs) thing out well done uh and pat under three minutes really excellent work um so would you like to discover something new hold a discussion or start a project um i would like to discover something new the the attention that has been brought to that little area um near you know the 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 sunken settlement or like the um how about this let's start giving them names that is the um uh, everybody else calls them uh the Bay folk, mm, but they hate that because it didn't used to be a Bay. Um, that was their town there. Um, um, the seep got to the town. Well, that, Oh, actually I think the seep is coming in on that other one, but the, the, that one, it like effectively it, it sank. Um, and so I think what is discovered now is everyone's like, we came from there. We used to have uh, like houses on stilts and whatever. And we, but like, then they were wiped out and it was too vulnerable during the war. And so like, nobody lives in the Bay anymore. Um, and so they're, they're either refugees everywhere or there's a few people on the shore. But now what, what happened is when people were in there and they're like, look at this tool, look at this stuff. 
being around there, um, th- somebody looked in and they see the bones of the old city. That's dope. That's really yeah. dope. Fuck, I love this game. Yeah, this is Thank great. I love doing this with you guys too. This is everything <laughs> I hoped it would be. Uh, this is so great. Oh, wait, <gasps> hold on. We're doing a charity. I was just thinking... I don't even care if uh, I shouldn't say this. It's like, I don't even care if we make any money. And then I'm like, oh, wait, we are doing a fundraiser. (laughs) Hold on, everyone. If you didn't know, we're doing a fundraiser. And uh, I'm terrified to click away from this scene in OBS. Let everything, lest everything just be a very bad thing. So instead, let me encourage you to follow the link over in chat um head on over way we're doing awesome here uh um we have uh copies of spider-man social dilemma a book from uh preeti uh cheber who was on for an interview earlier today it's a great book that's going to be coming out soon we have signed um uh early editions of Wes's new book in his upcoming uh, trilogy, uh, which will have specially designed arty book plates, um, only available through World Builders, right? So uh, jump on in there and back that. And again, all of the money, um, aside from what goes to publisher to keep the publisher going and Wes, because he should get a piece because he needs to eat. And then, but the proceeds then go to support charity. Uh, There's also stuff in here. If you like this world building and you know about Skyjacks, there's all sorts of Skyjacks, like uh, bandanas. There's some of my books that I'll sign and I'll put seven words in them. No guarantee what those words are. And, uh, or (laughs) if you just have some money and yet you live in a small apartment and you are trying to free yourself from the shackles of consumerism uh, and capitalism, or maybe you just don't want to clutter up your life there. You can just put a little money in here and trust that we will help. We will use it to help make the world a better place. And then you get to walk away with the best perk of all, which is knowing that you have done good in the world. And that's worth a lot these days. Um, wow. I'm, I'm doing a pretty good job. Only, (laughs) only doing like a very brief pitch there. That's that's pretty I'm doing... it, and you know that's good because we are officially moving out of spring and oh. into summer. Ooh. Okay. Moving into summer. Uh, right. What's the current status of our projects? We have. So you just completed uh, one of the projects, the first node I think in this network of cantaloupe gliders. That network that is now completed as of this turn. Okay. Ooh. And so we should denote that we can fly. Summer. Yeah. So is that the entire network? Now do all five places have catapults? Oh, I thought we said it was a node. Uh, a, a node. Like uh, like we just completed the first one or how about this? It's it's the it, the it's it's mass transit. It is set up but like but it is new, but it's done. So now now there are the catapults set up. Except, how about this? There's only the four because the little Bay refugee camp, everybody shits on them because they don't think of them as a real colony anymore. Mm. There's probably a pretty high mortality rate for the travelers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, how about this? Let's let's leave it where it's like, it's unveiled, ta-da! And it's like, it's there, but I, there, there are some things that will come up. It's like something shitty happens. What is it? We can build that in when the game forces us to, because it yeah. will now. Yeah. Uh, Wes, okay. since, uh, yes. since we are moving into diamonds, these questions are going to get a little bit, a little bit more texture. So I want to ask you: a scarcity has gone unaddressed for too long. You need to start a project that will alleviate that scarcity. Okay, so we have discovered that orichalcum pushes back the seep. However, we also know that orichalcum, the cantaloupes love orichalcum, 
And it, cantaloupe brains are what allows our people to live past 45. <laughs> That's why I forgot about that. That yeah. also plays in really well to the whole thrill seeker, die, live fast, die young, yeah. high status. Like Mentality. I want to, yeah, because why fuck about if you're going to die at 45 anyway? Yep. <sighs> so, so if we have, now we have a need for our calcum to do two things, push back the seep, or let people live longer. What do we choose to do? Oof. What was the specific phrasing of the card again, Aaron? Uh, it says a scarcity has gone unaddressed for too long. Start a project that will alleviate that scarcity. So is the scarcity refined or, or calcum? So, or, or just more because he says start a project. What's the mm -hmm. project that will make more? Mm -hmm. Because right now, regular or calcum is, is one of our regular things. Yeah, it's neither scarce nor like abundant. It's, it's just sort of we have a certain amount and it's sort of sufficient. But so, what would the project be that would either get us way more or calcum or resolve a scarcity of some element? Uh, of the orcalcum, is it a refining thing? So we 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 need orcalcum like three ways, mm -hmm. or two ways. Two ways. One is to re refine in a way that helps us push back the seep, and the other one is to be either molded or crafted in a way that the cantaloupe hunters can take to attract cantaloupe to kill, so we can get their skins to make more kites or suits, and then their brains to keep the old people living longer. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, we did say that the uh, orichalcum came from the volcanoes. Like we're getting it from the volcanoes. So maybe something there. Like, like a mining there. operation. We need to increase our. Or Either starting mining. a project of mining. Expand the mine or we could start a new mine maybe in the second volcano if there's only one right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Love that. Um. It's your call, Wes. Uh, I think we should build, get a mine set up for every single volcano. So let's 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 start uh, branching out our operations. Nice. My gut is the 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 one that is currently towards the bottom is the one that already has the mine. Mm -hmm. Um, and honestly, probably the Bay folk work that mine because. You don't typically work in a mine if you have better options. Um, so maybe it would be up on the top one. How, how is it to find a vein or do we already know where it is and it's just to build the mine? So do we need to do we need to actually send like geologists to go like find the veins? of? Is, is that how Orichalcum is, is, is found? I don't know. I think it's. You can make it up. Yeah, it's your call. Yeah, make it up. Um, either find it or or just build the mine, and then how many weeks is how the project gets made. Let's let's let's, let's build the mine. I I think we know it's a pretty it's a common enough substance that we we shouldn't have to spend too much effort like looking for it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it shouldn't take too long then. How many weeks you want to put to it? Three. All right. I think three is fair. Yeah, yeah. I'm into that. Uh, and so now you can discover something new, hold a discussion, or start a project. Oh, I, I thought that was my thing. <laughs> that, that was your card. Now, now you can it's, also. It said it on the card. <clears throat> Double project. What does it mean? All right. So uh, I think I think now that we use Orichalcum two ways, I think we should build more of those ref Orichalcum refineries. Yeah. Okay. It pushes back to seep. Okay. All right, so we're building a mine and a refinery. How many weeks for that refinery? Any different than the mine? Good. I think it's going to be a little bit longer. Six weeks? Sure. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. All right. It, it, could even, it could even be this is the first refinery because mm. before you discovered the tools, but yeah. now everyone's like, okay, we dug up the stuff, but now we got to actually implement it on a scale. Yeah. Yep. Uh, moving on to Lexi. So two things happen. Lexi, I have your card, but mm -hmm. uh, 
I think it may be valuable to note that your other project, Catching the Cantaloupe, is now completed. So okay. somebody Next. brought back a cantaloupe. It was, since that was my project, to sh how, how do we talk about, I, I guess it happened and then we just talk about it as things go along? It is now just a part of your community. It is going to be denoted on the map somehow. Maybe we can put where uh, it was found, where it was brought back to. Yeah. It's up to you. But that so project is now done. How, how, so how big are the cantaloupes? There are 100,000. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Straight face. Yep. Um, I, I, I do think gazelle. Gazelle. You know? Yeah, so the cantaloupe are a little right. different than the cantaloupe. Um, same usages, but someone found an alternative. Or I mean, brought one back, yeah, first time. Okay, gotcha. All right. Well, then your card, Lexi. What? A contingent within the community have acted on their frustrations. What have they damaged? Why did they damage it? And is it permanent? Oh, I want to be mean. You should. Be me. Like, be get me. in there. Be me. Yeah. I think... So, you said that the Bay Folk hate being called the Bay Folk. Um, what, do they have, like, a true name? The, how, what would they call themselves? Um, I, I'm up for suggestions. Yeah, I... Uh, so what are like the basic alchemical things like gold, iron, copper, like oh. we could name the communities based off of that maybe? Yeah. How about, uh, what if they're, Oh, that's name them after, name them after fingers. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> what if they are, uh, yeah. I mean, actually, um, somebody actually threw into the chat here and I meant to, I, I didn't want to interrupt for once, yeah. but they said they looked up or calcum and, and they're like, according to most histori historians <laughs> agree, or calcum was actually a copper alloy mixed with gold, tin, zinc, brass. So we could have, um, tin gold, like some variants of that. Like one of these yeah. could be the, the arum, which is gold. Uh, one of them could be, um, you know, so we could, we could do that when we name, but for the Bay folk, what if they, they were the Aram? Yeah. Um, and they, they were, that. they were posh okay. because they were yeah. refining this stuff. Um, and then some catastrophe happened. So I think they're sick and tired of being called the Bay folk. I think they're sick and tired of being not respected as a community. You said they're in charge of refining. The they used to be, but then it got blowed up. Yeah. So I think, oh, I want to be mean. Um, they were I the think rich people who, who lost everything. Yeah. They were used to privilege. They're the older siblings. So they're used to privilege. <laughs> they get <taken> away. <laughs> so I think they're going to do what they think will damage everyone else and not think about how it damages themselves. Um, I think that they're going to try to destroy, even though maybe they don't know that the cantaloupe has been found, they're going to try to destroy a huge supply of the cantaloupe, uh, the flyers, the gliders, oh, the gliders. because there's only a limited amount of those. I think they're going to send out groups to try to destroy huge <sighs> amounts of them. Like, are these the, for the mass transit or are these like, of the 17 extant flyers. I think the 17 flyers. Ooh, and that makes a ton of sense because back in the day, there were all of them. And then the, and it was like the two powers are the refiners and the flyers. Yeah. And it's like, they still stick around. Oh, that's vicious. Yeah. So they're taking it out. They aren't going to think about how it affects them. They probably, like I said, they probably don't know about the, um, cantaloupe coming back into the picture. Yeah. It's, it's Would the they first want time to that happened. Take the gliders for themselves, or are they like anti gliding? They want to destroy everything, become isolationists. Oh, gosh. Both I are. That is three minutes. Uh, so. Destroy. Do it. 
do it. That's destroy so it. good. Destroy it's it. so yeah, good. But... <laughs> it's so shitty. But yeah. but they're like that's that's what you do when you've been treated like this for so long. You yep. just you do a bad thing. Yep. Speaking of doing bad that. things, you get to discover something, hold a discussion, or start a project. Oh gosh. So discover something. How did that process go again? Uh, when you discover something. Uh, do, 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 do. it might be a problem, an opportunity, or a bit of both. You draw that situation onto the map. Uh, do, 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 do. Whenever things seem too controlled and easy, we can use this action to introduce new issues and dilemmas. Oh, jeez. Okay. I'm gonna introduce, I'm gonna discover something um i think this is probably a good time for the arum maybe the younger generation of the arum to begin like reaching out and like maybe they see kind of what the elders are doing and what what's going on there so i'm trying to think of like an opportunity um discover something you could you could i think it's okay to uh, discover something conceptually too like yeah you discover a generational divide or you discover an uprising or you just dis- i mean th- yeah uh, yeah i almost want to discover a tie that binds the generations oh rather but like the younger generations it's romeo and juliet or like oh, our families are like our the arm were so separated but now our younger generations have found a way to to tie themselves can, can to, yeah can i offer you a thing yes it's something i i swore to myself i wasn't going to make this game about it but it's come about naturally dr seuss <laughs> <laughs> um there is, I'm very into a thing I just learned about recently. Um, the old, uh, uh, how about this? It's something mathematically, it was really important to people for reasons I won't go into, mm-hmm. but it's a quest for fivefold symmetry. Um, because a lot of things have like 180 degrees or like uh, 120 degree symmetry. That's threefold, mm-hmm. like a triangle. And there's fourfold symmetry. But you do not have fivefold symmetry because a pentagon doesn't work that way. Yeah. So the quest for fivefold symmetry goes all the way back to Kepler um, and the mystics. And it was an alchemical thing, too. And there's five settlements here. And so the discovery of maybe the concept, not, not finding the symmetry, but I'd say um, like a book that sort of tells a story about this mythical peace will come to us. We need the, the, it's the discovery of the concept of fivefold symmetry, not the reality of it though. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Cause philosophically, I think that would, so then at the end of the day, it's like that quest for the fivefold symmetry is really, we have like that finding of hope and finding of a generational tie. So I I like that. They Mm -hmm. found a reason to connect to the other groups is, and is philosophically an start and yeah it's like a it's a concept like a new school of thought how do they know when they found that balance like what what, what does balance look like i think that because it's a philosophical exploration it's way less of a we have gotten the goal of the book because they're probably i'm going past my three minutes here they're probably reading the book extremely metaphorically (laughs) okay perfect yeah they're probably looking at it metaphorically and by that they're able to start going in the right direction rather than it being like this book tells us step by step how to solve this yeah or like the discovery of a movement you know to pursue like there's a movement to pursue this heel between the generation of the fivefold symmetry yeah yeah okay okay Uh, so moving on yeah go ahead cut no i Uh, my brain go ahead (laughs) i was gonna say how we doing because uh i believe at the top we're like we'll do a bio break (laughs) 
we we could also, that's me saying i need a bio how, how about this <laughs> let us um i will because i i have been forged in fiercer fires than this i will stick around everybody else can happily take a moment get a drink of water um you know same thing here in in the chat if you all want to take a little break walk away from your computers we'll reconvene in about three four minutes Okay. Um, so go do something biological, get and a drink of water lightning round and then yeah. lightning round. Nice. Ooh. Okay. Uh, hey chat. You could also, if you want, uh, wander over to the geeks doing good Indiegogo fundraiser where, um, we are selling at a bargain price, uh, some things that are hard to find these days. And those things are, uh, hope and good feelings and the ability to make positive change in the world. Um, and I, I, I challenge you to find another place selling them as cheap as we are selling them to you. Also, uh, I, let me encourage you to think of, like, if you put some money into NPR because you love their programming and you get a tote bag, you're not spending $200 on a tote bag. You are giving them money to keep doing what you love that they do. And you then get a tote bag from them saying, thank you. So that's kind of what's that. If you're like, if you look over there and you're like, well, I can get that book cheaper on Amazon. We know. And you know what? They'll, they'll ship it to you faster than we will too. Not going to lie. But the people who ship you our packages get to go to the bathroom whenever they want. And our packaging materials are, uh, ethically and uh, environmentally sourced um, and uh, and the proceeds go to charity and making the world a better place um, it kind of uh, when I when I started world builders all the way through although it's made it hard we we 100 um, percent you know we didn't want to do a charity but then like, only pay our people minimum wage. We didn't want to do a charity to make the world better and then force our people to work unpaid overtime. We didn't want to do mm -hmm. a charity and then make people like only somehow survive on volunteer labor and unpaid internships. So that means we offer benefits. You know, I, I insisted on maternity leave, even though when you're running a business with six people and somebody takes three months it leaves a huge hole in the organization but that's who we want to be but all of those th things do require a little more scratch which is why our culture doesn't value them here in the u.s yeah. so mm -hmm. if you're putting some money in you're not only helping world builders do good work in the world and do our other fundraisers you're helping people you're helping us be good members of the community we pay our artists you know um you know, and uh, if you want to be a part of that, come on in. Um, and, and I'm going to say real quick here, I'm not going to share the screen, but I'm going to say wander on over. I love the talent pipe pin that got made. Uh, it is it is so beautiful. Uh, that pride talent pipe pin. Um, oh, we've got if you missed the Kickstarter, the digger Kickstarter. Um, um, we now have. Um, the, uh, uh, some of those available, um, you, the Kickstarter would be fulfilled first, but after that, um, uh, you'll get the opportunity. You'll, you'll be first in the queue, uh, to get those new copies of Digger that we brought into print. Uh, just go have a look. Things are constantly being added. Uh, but not the least of which is West Chew's a uh, fabu new book uh with a unique designed uh here at world builders signed book plate um <laughs> you know and you get to you get to get that book all in your business that's not good marketing what i just said honestly those the, the sketches for those book plates are so dope like i saw oh, them this yeah. morning and I, I was like oh my god and you know aaron yeah. asked me to pick 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 one that i like the best and i was like i can't pick one <laughs> So, surprise me, Nate. Oof. Surprise me. Okay. Uh, so that's my hustle. 
Uh, was I the only one that did a bio break? Oh boy. Yes. That's no, just kidding. Wes did Very it. Very good. I... I'll just get a bottle at the desk. Uh, I have removed. <laughs> so excited. That's what Pat does. Um, I've removed some <laughs> cards from the deck so that we can still finish up on time. Uh, so, who whose turn was it, Pat? Oh, wait, no. I know it's Pat's turn because I had your question. Uh oh, yep. Yeah. Okay, hit me. Uh, but first, we've built the mine. The mine is done. Wow. The mine is done. That feels Dope. super fast. Three weeks, baby. So where's that mine going? Is it already on the map? Yeah, I think Julia's got it up there. Rad, mm -hmm. rad, rad, rad. Pat, I love this question for you. A headstrong community member decides to put one of their ideas in motion. Start a foolish project. Okay, uh, done. I don't even have to think about that at all. <laughs> I'm so happy. Hi! Huh. Oh, I gotta find this voice. Come on, Jessica. So, oh no, Je oh, I do love Jessica. The problem is Jessica didn't have a voice. I can't do no. Jessica's voice. Hi, <laughs> hi, no, her. Old, I need old timey prospector. Can you put that in my ear, Aaron? Old timey prospector. Spit. What in tarnation? Yeah. Well, well I'll say. I'll yeah, say. No, that's scared. Foghorn okay. Leghorn. I need spit from Skyjacks. No, no, no nobody's at that. <laughs> Uh, uh, you, you kids, you, yeah. you kids, I, oh my, how old can he be though? Oh, he is old and nobody knows if they believe him because he's one of the last <laughs> to have actually got a brain. He got some of that brain. So he he's lives like, longer. He, he doubled like up. He's, well, no, no, no. He he re-upped it's like do 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 extra life right so he is coming up on 90. he solved death hum hi i know you guys don't call me mcgillicuddy you call me <laughs> old man cuddy but my name is mcgillicuddy and i know that you don't think that i'm from here because i'm i'm so old but I was here and I knew your grandparents and I knew your grandparents' grandparents because you guys do it like bunnies and the generational gap is very small. And I know that sweet, sweet taste of them cantaloupe and that is what has given me the life. The life and now I hear the children, they are speaking the words that I knew in my youth, they are seeking. They are seeking that fivefold, that sh that fivefold symmetry, that that leads us, leads us to unity, the unity that brings us together. We are not five separate peoples. We are one person. Oh, yeah. And I'm telling you, we are going. I'm gonna go to the mountain. And I will find Johnny Speed, where I am sure he found his own cantaloupe, and he is still alive. He was my childhood, my boon companion. And he found, he is not out. dead. Those of minutes. you, you said that he was dead, you faithless and feckless. I say to you, I'm going to find Johnny and I will come down the mountain with him. He's still alive and he will fly me down and we will bring to you the truth of the fivefold symmetry. There it is. For people that haven't seen Pat on stream before, this is how he is <laughs> all the time. I actually, that's a, maybe the very first time. Can somebody clip that and send it to Matt Mercer, who I've <laughs> shamed myself in front of because he can do every accent and I can do no accent. Um, how many weeks does it take to find Johnny Speed? <laughs> Oh, it's good. It's six weeks. It's six weeks. It's this is a forever oh, quest. Six weeks. He refuses. He takes he takes with him a single eight year old boy who he calls the boy to mm -hmm. help him. Um, um, and 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 he 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 leaves and people try to come with him and they're like, but but 
but old Cuddy. And he's like, you're my Gilly Cuddy. That's not my real name. You know, and then he's gone. He leaves. Not to do it's that. It's 526, Pat. Yep. Do you want to discover something? Hold a discussion or start a project? Well, that that was the project. So now this is my new thing. I want yeah. everyone. What, ev what you were supposed to do for the card was foolish project. I mean, which it, that seems pretty yeah, right. I think I, yeah. I think I nailed it. Um, but now it's a now it can be a, a project of indeterminate. <laughs> I, you know, I, nice. I I don't know what it says about me. I'm like, what if I uh, what if I ruin my own thing that I just did and somebody else finds Johnny's bones? <laughs> yep. But no, no. What we have is now a discussion. Different community members mm -hmm. discuss. Um. Uh. Oh, um, not the that not his his foolish grail quest. Mm -hmm. um, instead, uh, the community discusses um, the the rising fear that as we pull more or calcum out of the earth, it is weakening these spirits of the land that we live on remember from the very beginning of the game mm. and it's leaching those minerals pulling that stuff out of the earth is what is actually allowing the seep to progress yeah the seep. we are fracking the island with orc help. oh no so so the question is the question is um should we keep pulling from the island it is destroying the island should we keep pulling from the island is the question yes oh, okay so you're doing a discussion yes discussion yeah. okay right. uh i don't have an accent but i am old man vishnu because Ooh. we have too many western names on this island oh, I, I couldn't come up with anything better than mcgillicuddy <laughs> jessica i know <laughs> But Vishnu's like, as an old 47-year-old man, mm. I need the orichalcum to lure the cantaloupe so I live longer. So I think that's more important than the sea. Um, um, my name is... Uh... Amon, and uh, I'm 30, so I'm getting close to that older age, but I am fairly in tune with the salt and or like the auric helcum, but I also am very spiritual, and I think that at the expense of the magic we've already discovered, we need to slow down so we don't awaken those gods. From from up the the mountainside, you hear. Oh, oh it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that you're 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 talking about that. Whatever you do, don't worry about it. I'll solve it all. Me and Johnny coming back with with the cure to what ails you. I just wanted to do his voice one more time. Thank you. I know. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone who's listening to we this on headphones. It. I mean, okay, so I'm gonna. So I'm sorry. Do, do I am I am I shown contempt? Am I showing contempt? How do I get a contempt point? I want a contempt point. I think you I can. I want a contempt point because you, you as this new 40, 47 year old Vishnu, I'd be like, yo, if I don't get more cancel brains, I'm gonna die. That's fair. So there you go. That's fair. Completely fair. Slow down. What an amazing sense. Dora Kelka mining. Oh, so contemptible. Amazing. Well, Wes, uh, I'm really excited for you because the card I pulled was the right. you know, diamonds. And uh, a project finishes early. Oh, yeah. Which one <laughs> and why? Uh, I will remind you, there are two current projects. There's build a refinery that has three weeks left. <laughs> and there's also... Find Johnny Speed, which has five weeks left. Oh, fuck yeah. Let's, let's, let's go find some Johnny. Oh, I forgot. And this, everybody, this is, 
an aspect of this game that I haven't experienced before. I created this project. It does not belong to me and neither does Johnny Speed. Johnny Speed or 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 old man Good Cuddy, old which means it is totally in bounds. Wes can do anything he mm-hmm. wants to this project or idea or characters. And I don't like it because I'm an author, but let's get in there. To, and also, Wes, don't hold do back. It. Hurt me. We have found Johnny Speed. He's alive. He's been <laughs> licking the Oracle bars, and it's changed him. Oh, oh I love that. Oh, I He's love nicer that. now. He now doesn't look <laughs> quite human. Two of his limbs, his right leg and his right arm, are a little shorter than the other. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no! And when you find him, he's like, you stay back. I'm going to keep licking my... my <laughs> Come closer and I, I got you. And that's where we are with Johnny. Love uh, that. Johnny is going to become my hope personality wow. very soon uh Wes, do you want to discover something new hold a discussion or start a project wow um we should have a discussion <laughs> so we've come to a point now where the younger we were trying to have the five point balance and we're, we're very close to harmony and peace okay but the younger generation want to slow down the Oracle mining because mm-hmm. it's destroying the island. Well, the older generation, the 45 year old, the books are like, we needed to live. So what should we do? That's fair. What should we do? What should we do? Uh, well, my name is Talon and I'm from uh, the, well, we used to be called the Aram, but obviously we're going for more of the one people. So I'm from this world. Um, and I think we've seen what an excess of Orichalcum will do. I, I think we should stop. I, I think we should slow down. voice in a world god damn it (laughs) where we must survive bounded by the sea we need to accept boundaries and I My name isn't important. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. No, no, sir. We really want to know your name. (laughs) I speak for the island itself. And what I say is we were not meant to live longer. We were meant to give ourselves back to the island. We must accept our limitations and our boundaries. We must return to the old ways. And that means at 45, it is into the volcano. As our people used to do and ever since we departed from the arts. And then they pull him off the stage because yep. it's been more than two sentences. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> that's the Cantalorax. He speaks for the volcano. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> not bringing the Lord. The Dr. Seuss. <sighs> he, he had to do it somehow. Uh, unless you get the final statement on the discussion. Oh, uh. I mean, I guess the entire time I, I just kept thinking to myself, um, isn't anyone bothered that Johnny Speed has a short leg and a <laughs> <laughs> I like yes. there's it's one like, guy that's why that. there's that one guy who's much. like, look, but no, ser- like, look what? at that. <laughs> that's his attention. Nobody's looking over there? Is anybody seeing He's like this? walking upright along the side of the mound, everybody's like, eh. oh, gosh. And how old uh, is Johnny Speed? Because has he has he broken the threshold of 
Oh, by a lot. I mean, old old, old Cuddy said uh, <laughs> that they were friends together in their youth, so he's got to oh. be 70, 80. Jeez. All I picture is Keanu Reeves. Johnny Speed is Keanu yep. Reeves. Oh, boy. Okay, yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. That, which, ageless. Um, which brings us... Oh, wait. Was that... Yeah, that, that was your discussion. Lexi. This is going to be a fun one. Lexi, I pulled your card, and you have the Jack of Diamonds. Predators and bad omens are afoot. What measures do you take to keep everyone safe and under surveillance? Oh, by the way, do not reduce project dice this week. None of the projects Oof. move forward. Oof. Um, predators. Um, and what are we doing to keep... Um, okay. Ah, uh, I think that whichever settlement is the biggest settlement. Oh gosh, the only predators I can think of are. I did you say people? Did you say people? Game. I'm I'm literally thinking about like things like Johnny, people like Johnny who were we said that there is a very low chance of you surviving when you glide so people like johnny who have turned up in random spots lived off the orichalcum and oh. are showing up to kind of like bring oh. fear maybe they didn't yeah. crash and burn maybe some of them started like the old or a calcum, like the refined or calcum salt licks that were out there. They yeah. were up there. They're like, I'm not going back. I'm not going to keep risking my neck. Also, I don't want to die when I'm 45. Yes. They're up there. And now they're these feral. Mutants, human species. Goat, goat men. Yeah. Goat men. See, I'm loving the idea of them being mutants, but I also like the idea of them being very intelligent and very sent and like being able to see past that part of their society that was killing them at 45 mm. loving that idea um, yeah like maybe but i think that's yeah 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 like maybe johnny and all all there but some of the others might be yeah oh no the one that was brought back was the one that was brought back because we brought a cantaloupe back yes that's the animal though not 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 the mutant person well and that's just it what if what if somebody brings, I'm sorry, what was the question? I've lost the thread. <laughs> predator and how are we keeping everyone? Because my idea is, what is the predators? But I think that they're bringing, they're trying to warn people at the settlements to come to the biggest settlement, maybe. Yeah. What measures do you take to keep everyone safe and under surveillance? Ooh. Yeah. Surveillance. Um, I will say, just to make it easier, the upper... Uh, left hand as I'm looking at it town is probably the biggest one yeah. and you can call that Tinker Town because uh, Tinker Town I think the reason that no projects move forward is because everyone who's working on the projects like they're asked to come back to the town and help protect and like keep everyone safe in every single like instead of it being everyone flocked to Tinker Town it's like nope let's all stay at our own settlements but don't work on any projects while we try to figure this out in the five points like the five leaders of each settlement and whatever force is outside of that they all decide to go solve this predator issue are the predators hitting all the towns at once or are they just hitting like one area i think they're hitting one area but it's enough that it's freaking out everyone yeah because there's been war for a while but there's no predators here like yeah, so it's immediate fight or flight like oh we got to pack it down because this might lead to something bigger which is also a fair trauma response from a culture that's been at war for a long time yes that's a good insight and that's also three minutes uh Perfect. so lexi discover hold the discussion do a project uh geez um feel like we should discover a little something something let's do it i think we should discover something um we discover we discover that these p 
people, these mutated people, ha- like they're actually coming to speak to the settlements. And we discover that one of the volcanoes has signs of becoming active. Oh, damn. And active for some just means a volcano, but active for others, more connected to the land and more connected to the mythology of the place. That means elemental about to turn up and <laughs> uh, no magic. The aura calcum <laughs> and everything, everything going on there will just be null. Right. Well, I mean, if nothing else, you can't mine when the volcano is erupting. Yes. <clears throat> I'd like to see you try it, though. Uh, that's fantastic. I would, I, Julia can't, I'm sure, draw that unless I taunt her to do it. That would be fun. Uh, Pat. Is it both volcanoes or? Just yeah, one. volcano? Just I, one. Uh, can I recommend which... the southern one? Because that's the one that all the orcalcum has been getting coming out of. Yes. Um, immediate pressure on everyone to figure out their shit or figure out what they're going to do. Yep. (laughs) Perfect. Yeah. Uh, and they're going to need that time to figure things out because we're moving into autumn again, lightning round for you, Pat. I have a question. Uh, a project finishes early, which one and why? Hey, you only have one project, build a refinery. Um, It finishes early, but it finishes. It isn't isn't stopped or whatever. So it finishes early. Completed. It's completed early, and why? So, oh, you know what it is? Is everyone who, um, uh, everyone else had a place to go, and a town. But effectively, the Aram are living in like a, a like a second generation refugee camp. That's sort of like whatever they've cobbled together. There's no walls or whatever. Um, and so, but the refinery is close to there. So effectively, the the um, it's like look out, predators. Also, the mountain, and they're like, okay, we're going. They, I will say this, they go in and they take it over. They were working at it before. They go in and it's like a people's uprising. It's like, this is our facility now. And not only, and so they finish the walls. It's like, now this is our safe space, but also it's ours. And and they have finished the, the machinery or, or whatever the process is inside because that was their, their shit back in the day. Mm. Have the arm? Have they successfully destroyed all the kites, all the suits, and flying? How many did they destroy out of the seventeen? Out of the seventeen, thirteen. <sighs> Ooh, only so now, four. Traveling is a rarity now, unless you go by foot through the jungle. Unless yeah. you do well, unless you do the 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 mass transit, which doesn't use those; it uses the other cancer you know, lobes. Yeah, yeah, the the <laughs> other easier to produce gliders. Um, okay. So then I get to pro- project, discuss. Uh, project, discuss, or discover. Or discover. I think we discover that the cantaloupe, because this was, what's it, what's the phrase that says, um, like, oh, it was the real news of the day, but it's like the old timey. Uh, f- phrase. You're all about it. Extra. extra. Yeah, yeah, it. I, I can't remember, but the they brought the news back around the sundial. They brought back the mythical can, and so it's effectively it's like we said we were going to, and here's a unicorn, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, okay, it is they, they are either they were real and one still exists at least, mm-hmm. and here it is. But now what they discover is it starts to talk. Mm. What's talking? The the one they brought back. <gasps> Antelope. And it it's like, yeah, how about this? They discover it can talk. And they discover because um, it's, you know, because at first, like everyone, like they brought it in and they 
put a little pen where it can go around and around in the right direction. Um, and, and then, and everyone came to look, but then like all this other stuff and volcano and predators and everything. And so like that little mini zoo got not a lot of attention. And then, so something was going on and like somebody was taking care of it. And there were a couple of people around and like, just like a woman and her two kids and, then like the cantaloupe was doing whatever and it like slipped and it kind of fell off and it was fuck, you know? And then, yes. And, and the woman doesn't even realize this is weird. The only reason anyone finds out her name is Karen, by the way, she goes mm-hmm. and she complains to the people running the zoo <gasps> oh, because boy. this thing said fuck in front of her kid. She goes like, I demand a refund of my ticket price. I demand an, a formal apology from both the board of directors and <laughs> That filthy, filthy animal that said fuck in front of my children. They, that's, and so, and, and she's, it. yeah. And they're like, and they're like, huh, it, it doesn't, it probably, it probably like made a bleat of some sort. And she's like, no, it said, it said, fuck me. Fuck. Ow, ow, ow. Fuck, 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 Three fuck, minutes. Fuck. The end. <laughs> and, that's your three minutes. And Aaron. that's the title in the okay, newspaper okay. is okay. it's like, fuck me. Ow, 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 ow. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Says I Cantaloupe. <laughs> Okay, okay. It's in the title. Okay, okay. Um, okay. I'm ready to tie this together. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, you so, got it. Wes, you got the king of clubs. And here's the thing. It gave me a choice of which to give you. Uh, and one of the choices was you focus on getting everyone to safety after a natural disaster. Remove an abundance and a project fails. There's no projects right now. Okay. So instead, oh. a natural disaster strikes the area. You focus on protecting your supplies and hard work at any cost. Several people die as a result. Acceptable, okay. Hold on, did you? That's it. Oh, I see. He has to choose between an abundance going away or people dying? Yeah, but there's no project. It it was remove an abundance and a project fails. There's no active project, so. I mean, if I was to be magnanimous, magnanimous, I can't say that word. Um... Salt is what's causing the sea. So if we just get rid of salt, we kind of solve a problem, which kind of feels like a really good solution. So I think instead, let's just have people die. <laughs> instead of doing the, the good thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm that's sorry. Exactly that's exactly how it works, yeah. That, that, that's too serendipitous. People die. Them's the bricks. Well, what's the natural it's, disaster? Yeah, what's the natural oh, disaster? It's got to be the volcano, though, right? It's got to be the volcano. That's already yeah, happened. Yeah, they've been warning. I will say, uh, if the volcano erupts, it will just ash all over the salt flats, which means suddenly there is no salt. Yeah. But I'll okay. also say the seep isn't going to go away it just it's it's just just ruined the salt we just lost the salt and there's still seep if if you want that like it's just the thought maximum damage you can still kill people too uh you know i think we just lost a lot of people okay who but i'm ready for the next part oh gosh okay all right discussion discover or project discovery let's do it so, scientists are, are, are the few scientists we have remaining. We're very curious about the fact that the cantaloupe said fuck. <laughs> Upon further research about the cantaloupe's genetics, and after speaking with Johnny Speed, we have discovered that all those cantaloupes used to be people who, after crashing or surviving off the, the, the land and licking orichalcum has turned into cantaloupes. So all those cantaloupes are, used to be people. I'm here for it. Love that. I was hoping somebody well, would pick that up. Yes. It, it fits together uh, very tidy. It, and somebody in the I chat don't... is like, I knew it. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> That's a good sign. <laughs> uh, well, Jeez. I mean, we'll see if it's a good storytelling, sign. baby. I, I think, I think, based on what Wes just revealed, this will uh, play very interestingly into Lexi's question. Mm-hmm. Lexi, the strongest among you dies. What caused their death? Oh 
gosh, who's the strongest among us? I'm not saying that physically. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Pat, the setup and the alley oop. Uh, so, yep. <laughs> McGillicuddy, I mean, made huge discoveries and probably predicted the cantaloupe thing before the cantaloupe <laughs> thing happened, but no one listens. Probably predicted the volcano before the volcano happened, but no one listens. And in the time that people actually are like, oh, he got something right, people probably go to him to try to find what exactly he could predict about the future. And he dies, but he dies. Oh, and I, here, here's a quick question to, to before you, you get there. Yeah. Because when... Like I do imagine him going off into the mountains. Yeah. And then it was like one turn later, Wes was like, Johnny Speed, they find him, he's the thing. I didn't know if did McGillicuddy bring him back or did he just show Ooh. up? Because I think McGillicuddy was still gone. Still gone. So you can still kill him off. It's just he might not be back. You might have to go out and they're like, we got to go whatever. It just might impact how you want to kill him. You can make that call either way. <laughs> he stumbles down the mountain and like soot in his mouth, uh, signs of just terrible things happening, him having to survive off of the orichalcum. And in his hand, he's found a new element. Ooh. And he Ooh. dies like knees to the ground, drops to the ground, falls face forward in the middle of a community with this new element in his hands. And no one knows what it is and how it's going to react with anything else. I love that. I love that. That's I love perfect. it. Perfect. Super cool. Project, discussion, or discover? Oh, I feel like this is a discussion. I feel like this is a discussion, but also I feel like there's a project to be had about discovering what this is. Um, <laughs> Or I can make it a discovery. Oh, discover something. We discover something. Um, the entire community comes together to talk about what this might be. And while they're talking, it gets heated. They're not really sure what it, what it means. There's been deaths. There's been the volcano erupting. Um, and a child meanders up to this element and discovers that, like, starts kind of running around outside with it. Uh, and they discover. Just let him walk. I love like, it. I love it. I love it. Because that's what kids do. It's like exactly everyone's standing around mournfully. And a little kid is like, a yoink. Find this very <laughs> Just... deep philosophical answer with this child. Um Oh my gosh, because I feel like the best case scenario, the volcano has erupted. The orichalcum is, the salt is, oh, the seeping. The seeping is kind of interesting. Um, I know my three minutes is almost up. Uh, so I think that this kid finds, <sighs> this kid starts running and starts to it starts to attract pieces of salt to it like a magnet <gasps> oh, okay. and when he runs back to parents the community holds it up and they realize they've created an like this kid has found an opportunity to either destroy the seeping and like figure out how to get it out of the ground or to refine salt but i feel like feel like it's the seeping i feel like the kid discovers the solution to the seeping you dis i think you you can discover that this does something but i think we would need to do a project i agree yeah discovers so that it's 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 it, yeah it's it, salt attracts to it does it become like a big projects. salt ball yeah like kid is holding on to it like a kid who has slime and then went and like played in like a playground like full of sand and comes back and it's like here hold this <laughs> to an adult <laughs> like that kind of situation i find it really interesting that projects have been on your mind you very nearly almost chose a project pat said that to do that you would need a project mm -hmm. pat i pulled your card okay 
the Ace of Clubs, which is my pet name for you. Okay. <laughs> the community becomes idle due to no projects being worked on. Add a scarcity born of idleness. Okay, so right now, salt is no longer a abundant. Salt is scarce. Um, or calcum, I think, is scarce. Mm-hmm. Um, You're adding a scarcity. I'm so. adding a scarcity. I'm going to say what becomes... I can, I'm going to add a new resource and make it scarce. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And that resource is... Hope. Oh, sorry, no. s- sorry to make it a little real, folks, but like McGillicuddy yeah. came back down, and he, and he is fucking dead as leather, and a lot of people were maybe yeah he was crazy, but they were kind of you know then it's like boom oh no whatever and then there, mm. so yeah and so right now that's in short supply and also there's bad weird mutants coming out of the whatever and it's like it is it is not a great time it's it's 2020 for our little archipelago so as a community of humans we were on an island we took all the resources we turned it all scarce (laughs) after like half a year Mm -hmm. so it's very much on brand we're doing it it. (laughs) so pat do you want to start a project discover or discuss i i think the discussion is and it's either a question or a statement how does that work either like it is it is a question or a statement and then the other players answer in one to two sentences you have the final statement the question is what was the thing that you loved most that old man McGillicuddy did over the course of his life <laughs> The question is, what did we enjoy most? What about did you McGillic- love most about McGill? I'm forcing you all to write fanfic about the character that I made. Okay, perfect. I can do all that. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Instead of doing name. anything productive, I want nope. everybody to say my character uh, was cool. Humanity. My, <laughs> my name is Hibachi. And I knew old man McGillicuddy when he was only 25 and I was 12. And what I loved the most about him was he used to tell me stories about the time before the war when there were things like wheels. <laughs> that was it. That's all I got. <laughs> That's all I got. And it was like, there's like the scattered kind of clap yeah, from the yeah. audience. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my name is Eleanor Constance Jane. And um, I chose the most Western names <laughs> in the world. Thank you. Thank um, you. <laughs> so sorry. Eleanor Constance Jane. Jane and I loved uh, McGillicuddy would go uh, invisible once a week. <laughs> and I admired that about him. Very cool thing to do, in my opinion. That's it. Very good. Very, very good. I'm <laughs> I'm Chibi Ch- Ch- Cho No It's not it's what? just no. Cho Cho that's, that's not it It's Chibi It's gotta be another one Chibi Chibi Ch- uh, just I'm old you know, a lot of you call me old lady Chibi There we go And I've been I was lovers with old man McGillicuddy for a long time. Oh. And I I could talk at great length about the things that man could do. Because when you've been around as long as that, you learn a trick or two. And he was a sweet talker. He, uh, he knew how to use his words. And that is a sexy thing. Boys out there know how to learn your words. And Ooh, use that them. sounds like two sentences. Uh, but also, what I what I loved about him most is that he always said that he could come back from the the dead if he wanted to. He was pretty sure he could Whoa. do that. The, <laughs> just, <laughs> he buried the lead. <laughs> the, the end. That's it was. There's a lot of it's semicolons in straight. that. 
a lot of semicolon. Shit. <laughs> I just I just wanted to leave the door open for fanfic in the future. We need to yeah. have a talk about old man McKillicuddy here because he he's he did a lot of things that uh suddenly we're all like hold up. <laughs> could turn invisible, could come back from the dead. <laughs> he's ninety uh, years old, climbing a volcano. Oh my god. I I just can't even with this. Um we are moving from autumn into winter. We are in the final stage of our game. Uh, I, I will say briefly, hey, everybody, I know it is six. Um, this would be a weird place to stop. But you know what? I'm fine with weird. Um, we have had a great time here. The joy is the journey. Uh, but if, if you guys have a hard out, I, I do not want to keep you past your appointed hour because you're here out of the goodness of your heart. Um, do you have another... Another 10, 10, 15, will that inconvenience you? Please say yes if you got a bounce. I, I totally get it. Oh, okay. I, I got 10, so. Okay, let's do 10. 6, 10 is where we will call it. Uh, okay. Thanks, Lightning thanks, round. Wes. Lightning round. Wes, you yes. see a good omen. What is it? Let's see. Volcanoes were erupting. The seepage is now invisible, but it, it's happening. There are human mutant predators coming at us down from the mountain, and we're all hiding in our in our in our cities. So I'm gonna have to say the good omen right now is we see on the horizon in the on the ocean's horizon ships approaching. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Bearing the flags of the Frost Shepherds, which we think is a good thing, but we're not sure. Oh. <laughs> okay. Project discussion discover. <sighs> I, Wes, I, I really don't want to tip the scales, but there's so many of these that are reliant on you having a project. Okay, okay. <gasps> <laughs> like, it's going to get real bad. Let's let's set up a project we see ships in the distance and we think they're good because we haven't seen anybody but our own island people for the past year and we're like you know what we should make a banquet for for our our, our friendly frost shepherds coming to to help us out so a welcoming party for a the welcoming end. party for the frost shepherds. the end okay all right until the end hey uh how long is it gonna take for you to set up a welcome party we get like two weeks, man. We gotta hurry up. Oh, I, I gotta say, it's gotta be at least three weeks because literally we have no abundance of literally anything. <laughs> true. We have, we have nothing to eat. It's, it's gotta take three weeks, and even then, we're it's gonna be bare. Here is Are a. Are you locking in three weeks? I, I'm just okay. saying. I'm just suggesting, and people can go against me, but then I will get to have contempt. Lexi, it's I've true. drawn for you the uh, the Ace of Spades. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite Pennywise songs. Um, now is the time to conserve energy or resources. If a project takes more than two weeks, gain a scarcity. Can, can, we, can we please say that mine was at three weeks so we can get another scarcity? I want, I want to see Pat with, with some contempt. Okay. Okay. So was it? it... So, what, so your project, was it longer than two weeks? It was three weeks, as said by Pat. <laughs> cool. <laughs> he was um, like, it has to be three. That only makes sense. Yes, it's true. Um, okay, okay. This makes sense. This makes sense. So is my goal to create a scarcity? I think so. Yep. It's something that got used up for this banquet. <gasps> Canterlope. I feel the... like... Did we kill the talking cantaloupe? Because that's what came back. We killed. We, we That killed is it. dark shit. We killed it. That's also low-key making the hope even more scarce. Oh my. And are, 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 are we feeding the cantaloupe, the cantaloupes to our, our, our friends without telling them what they really are? No, no. Uh, I think that. I don't think we should tell them. <laughs> I think we should just feed it to them. Well, Eat up. No, this was the last cantaloupe, like the real cantaloupe the that we've seen. One. So so what it could be is 
it's like, well, if we're going to have a party, everybody should get some of that last cantaloupe brain so that we all don't die. And so they made they. it's like that was the resources that one. But 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 aren't they all people that turn into animals? I mean, I'm not saying yes. it's not bad. Um, it tastes amazing. It does. I feel like it okay, like it's either. Bass. I think it's. Oh. But we don't have to do that. P.S. I don't think it's. I don't think it's cancer. Okay. I okay. think that we're gonna. What we're gonna make scarce. Um, what are we going to make scarce? I think we're going to make. Uh, we have a scarcity of. Uh, God, that volcano looks amazing. <laughs> what? What? If, it could be something scarcity simple like discovery and short. It could be a, sh a shortage, like really short-sighted, like, and now we make our huge banquet tables and we do this. And it's like we we like we like deforest the island in our enthusiasm to like rush. Like we can't make great food, but we're, we're going to have a pavilion. Yeah, I think we I think it's just like scarcity on like the actual structural thing. So like logging, we just log a lot. In order to make the, the the accommodations for them to stay on the island, um, place for the pavilion, all of those things. Yeah, like yeah, it's like the Olympics. Logs. Yeah. Oh my God, it is the Olympics. It's true. It's the yeah. Olympics. Oh, <laughs> Hang. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, unfortunate. Highly <laughs> unfortunate. Um. And now Start discuss project. project. Discover. Disc discuss. I know. Is this a discussion? Um, it's a discussion. Um, yeah. The question is going to be, uh, what is life going to be like after our friends set foot on the island if we have no resources left? Obviously, says Jenny Speed, obviously there, you know, and she doesn't have her thing anymore because it got burnt. Mm -hmm. So she looks mm -hmm. rough, right? Like, just like hot, dark eyes. And she's like, obviously, she's become a fanatic now. She's like, obviously, they're going to take us to a place where everything, where there's just everything we need. There's everything we need there. And and everybody, everyone, I, I bet, gets their own glider. And they have a cantaloupe for miles. And nobody claps. <laughs> <laughs> Just quick turn away. Vishnu's like, I've been around. I don't, I don't trust this place anymore. I'm going to take all the other old people, everyone over 45. <laughs> We're all gonna go to the volcano. We're all gonna lick the or a calcum, and we're all gonna turn into cantaloupes. Screw y'all. We're out of here. Screw y'all. Uh, yeah. My name's Talon. Um, I know I spoke before, but I really think that. Uh, I mean, life's gonna change, but I don't know. At least we'll have each other. You know, that's kind of cool. And we'll have the aura Kilkum, but mostly each other. You and suck! I along the way. <laughs> <laughs> like, you some, suck. like, I can picture somebody doing, just because I was looking, and it's like, we're low on hope. And so somebody's like, at least, it's like, boo! Yeah. <laughs> we have each other and friendship. And I'm like, like, we need to eat. <laughs> it sucks. It sucks I so much. But I, I can picture some asshole doing that. It's the worst. It's real life Twitter. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. Oh, oh. Poor Talon. Okay. That's the discussion. It, it hit me with that. That was all three? Yeah, that was, that was all three. All right, An infected outsider arrives seeking amnesty. They have I, I so much have to run, guys. And so, Wes, thank you so much. We're right, going to wrap you this thank one. You, Bye. Bye, right. Wesley. And everybody, if you want to sort of thank Wesley for showing up, um, then please... Uh, wander on over to the Indiegogo and uh, and check out his book. Um, it 
is a delight. It's going to be a big deal. You want to say you got in there first and you can like swagger in front of your friends that you know about the next new big thing that's coming out. Just saying. Uh, thanks again, Wes. Thanks, everybody. Bye. See you, Wes. Um, uh, I say the whole, um, I say the whole fleet arrives mm -hmm. and instead of, and they're like, and they show up and they're like, we've, we've heard that you possess medicine and whatever they show up. And they're and and it there it's plague ships. I'm so sorry, but like, you know, yeah. that's this yeah. stinks. This stinks. We made a 2022, everyone. Yeah. Uh, 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 or we made a 2020. Um, uh, and what was the follow up? The follow up. Yeah. Well, an infected outsider arrives seeking amnesty. They have some much needed resources with them. Do you welcome them in and remove a scarcity? Or do you bar them from entry? And how does how does that scarcity get addressed? Oh. You would have needed those resources. I think they show up. How about this? They show up. We ha we let them in because we're expecting them. High hopes. Yeah. There's a banquet. And and they're like, our people have told tales. You have you can extend your lives beyond the natural limits. Yeah. And so, but what we get is, man, I am torn because logistically they have landed in ships. So now we have lumber. Mm -hmm. Could we, could we try to pull this out of the fire? Could we say what they've brought is hope? Yes. Because That's it's exactly. like they show up and there isn't much, but they're like, our stories tell us that there is, that you can help can can you help yeah and what they and it's and and everyone what if instead of like this was our last thing it's like maybe we can't you know what i am this is what i'm saying because because sometimes if you can't help yourself what's the only thing you can do yep is you help, help somebody else. else and you, you if you can't fix your own, this is how I deal with everything, folks. Yeah. Sorry, man behind the curtain. Why do I constantly do a charity? I cannot fix my own life. And so I am trying to fix everyone else's in the world. And so this is what it is. It is now, it gets rid of a scarcity or it creates an abundance. Yeah. Which which one is yeah. it, Aaron? Uh, you either welcome them in and you and you can eliminate a scarcity or... Okay. You refuse them, and whatever you needed gets even more dire. So now uh, hope is no yeah. longer scarce. Now we have an adequacy of hope, which is the also the title of my autobiography. <laughs> uh, and uh, for my for my final and do you have a couple more minutes? Do you want to just bounce this back between me and you, Lexi? I'm, yeah, I got time. Yeah, and then we'll and we'll see. So here's my final thing. We discover, are you going to say that the next one is that they show up and it's the end, Aaron? Who's to say? Okay, fair. So Just over here doing Gambit cosplay. Um, oh, yeah. I think what happens is we discover um, we discover you know, with what they have brought with them um we discover how, how, any any thought here because it like it could in, be like i mean if they're rejuvenating hope it helps us to help them they bring i mean they would probably bring their own medicines but also like i, I would think like seeds almost like trees like how, planting how about trees this? What if let's actually if we're going to lean into hope here, let's go all the way. These people are actually from the place we've been at war with. Right. And yeah. they were totally like because long term war just ruins everybody's deal. Yeah. Right. And so but also we've been trading with them. We've been stealing from each other. Um, and so they show up and in the boats like 
and they've been having to buy or calcum and salt because like this is mm-hmm. what we supply. They show up and in their boats, the the mode of their boats, the only way we've been, they've been able to come at us because we're good at boats. They're not, but they have magic magicked up their boats and the or calcum is this is what remains of their fleet except plague has wiped them out that's what's led to this lull and so they show up and this is effectively all of the orcalcum from what remains of their entire war machinery they show up with it yeah. in their boats and so there's just spikes of it and it used to be when you would drive back the uh uh the seat Titans, pin- oh just kidding no. it was like oh, you're good. it was a it was a like a, a tent stake you would drive into the ground yeah. and it would push back the seep. What they have is these rods of this refined or calcum from decades of trading and refining. They've used it and they brought it back. And this is what we discover is in their ships is a wealth of this resource that we have misused and given away and the lack of which has been ruining us. That's what we discover Mm -hmm. is in addition to keepsakes, memorabilia, some food and whatever, but the main thing they brought is the ships themselves and the Orcalco. Yeah, love that. I really love how you're building up the hope. Okay. I really love how that is something that was scarce and now is adequate. (laughs) I mean... Hey, hey, everybody, who out there wouldn't just fucking fall all over themselves for an adequate amount of hope? Give me some adequate hope, please. <laughs> Amazing. And that's the end? <sighs> Winter. Okay. That is the end. <sighs> the Frost Shepherds have arrived. And the rules say that, that the game should end abruptly, but I would really love it if, since we are at the end of our quiet year, if we heard from some of our favorite dwellers in this map, I'm not saying specifics, but I, I think you should both get a chance to, you know, say goodbye to the character, say goodbye to the world. And I'd love to offer that. To you. Okay. We could even do this in the framework of the game where we could each of us. And I, how about this? What if each of us, Aaron and Lexi and Julia, um, uh, un- unseen, but not unloved, uh, and me, what if we each offered a question for discussion and it's mm-hmm. sort of like, or or it's like, and, but instead of being like, it's a, something we discuss, like, what are we going to do or how do we feel? It's like, it's more of a question like, where, do, what happens with this? Or where does this go? Or yeah. what about X? You know, like whatever is most important to us that we'd like to resolve in this story. Are we starting with me? We can start with whoever has one. I have, I have a question that I would like to be answered. Um, a few a few months ago, we just uh, th- th- there was there was somebody that discovered a tool. Now, I don't know whatever became of that tool, but I would like to know that tool's history, where it came from, who used it, and how it ended up being discarded. Is the tool the uh, the thing the kid found when digging? Yeah. Or okay. Yeah. So now is this a a flashback or is this a flash forward epilogue sort of thing? I don't know. I'm just facilitating. Okay. It. So I think we can it's all legal and we can all now chime in on that. Uh Julia, if you want, and if you don't, no worries, because I don't want to put you on the spot. Not not everybody loves improvisational storytelling. Uh not everybody is a me. Um no, it's all good. So, Lexi, do you want to start there? So the question was, what is this tool? What happened to this tool? Either right, yeah. where's it from, or where's it, go- or what do- what came of it in this in this in the end in the epilogue of of our story. Also, I'm not sure we ever classified what it was. Yeah, yeah. We did. I'm imagining. Um, we I'm just, just going to say it's a trident. Ooh. Trident. Yeah. Um, hmm. well, um, my name is Jessica. Once again, just in case you need it, Jessica Speed. Um, and 
that tool, though medieval in nature, it turned into something that brought us together, turned into something that inspired innovation, creativity, moved us forward. And now it has turned into the basic mechanism for our refineries and honestly, our entire lives. What if it was made of whatever the same material that the boy found in McGill's I was just going to, Julia, go like <laughs> absolute, because that's where I was going to go to. Yep. That's amazing. Yes. Yep. It's amazing. And once, yeah. So once they discovered that, that was part of this process. It's effectively, oh, it's a catalyzer. Yeah. Um, it's not something that is consumed. It is something it is something that facilitates, if you will. It's yeah. it's it's and it's referred to this new element as amandolium. Mm-hmm. Um and uh and sounds pretty feeble. <laughs> <laughs> Not feeble. <laughs> and uh and uh and that that trident, uh, trident obviously was it was mostly decorative or it was a badge of power, but it was valuable. But used in the facility, it catalyzes from this this corrupted version. And if what it does is it pulls all the impure salts out of it. Yeah. You know, uh, mm-hmm. and that refines. Mm-hmm. Yep. I anyway, love that. That's, it. that's, that's it. very good. Uh, Julia, do you have a question? Um. I guess whatever came of the the mine that blew up and that was where the folks of Aram worked, what what did they go on to do if they weren't mining? Hmm. Yeah, I like this. We can do it in character or we can just do it's like here's my idea for how this resolves because this is our epilogue. I like this right. mechanism. Yeah. I mean I think it would be interesting if because they're the ones kind of like on the water as well if they were almost the first to go and find these other people that set like that sail to our lands because we obviously trade um but the second that they set like set foot on the land that the first thing that you said that they said was uh we've heard about this mysterious substance um, this thing that you all cultivate. And so if they were the first to kind of leave and say, there's nothing left for us here, the younger generation stayed very obviously, but the older generation just, we have to go. I don't know. Or maybe it's the other way around. The older generation stayed and the younger generation yeah, dipped. I could go Out with the old and with the new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do, do they leave or do they go into the volcano? Do, or does some go into the volcano? Does, did that get any traction? Some. Some. I think it I think it it got some traction. Yeah. A okay. little bit. A little bit of fame. <laughs> okay. Um and Lexi, do you have a question or or issue or or unresolved yeah. thread? Um I think that that original idea of, I guess I would like to ask, was the first volcano erupting? Uh, It's hard because it's more of a metaphorical question. Um, Did the prophecy come true? That's what I'll ask. I think that's a, a fair one. I think... My guess, and this ties a little bit into to Julie because that's where that first mine was too. Mm-hmm. My thought is, once you know, effectively you remove these fuel rods, you know these mm-hmm. pieces of our or, or calcum, and people have sort of been seeing this common element. Like we pulled it out, we traded it away. Um, you know, it's it's possible that what's happening with the salt is sort of like bleeding essential things out of the soil or something. We thought, we thought it was something going in, but maybe it was something coming out. And then we were trying to reverse this process clumsily by putting it back in, but it's just, it's too much and not enough. 
it's like you know, like only eating cheeseburgers and then taking too many multivitamins. Yeah. It's like <laughs> that's not balance. Nope. Hey, hey man, I told you that in confidence. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I think is in an attempt, it's like, okay. So I imagine them sort of like planting these stakes. Like we can we can sort of do this in a moderate, sustainable way, but like they put the stakes around the volcano and then it it quiets. Maybe not entirely, but if if what has sort of stirred this up is over mining. You know, and so like yeah. they've sort of used the arc or calcum all over, and then uh, to to do these different things, um, and then maybe some into the refinery, but you know, and then some to take care of the seep. My thought is then the the volcano probably would just sim maybe not go all the way out because because you we do still need to kind of you know make a living and get some of this yeah. stuff, but. It's we're trying to find a, uh, a homeostasis or something. Yeah, I love that. Into it. Um, and so mine would be. I was thinking along the same lines because that's kind of where it started with that legend or myth. Yeah. And so my gut is, is sort of along those lines too. Would be. Well, and, and I kind of talked that one through. Did anybody else want to chime in on does this ever happen or does the mountain or does the volcano or whatever? Do, do, you know, because mine is a little bit like in the in the long term, do these do these spirits ever rise? You know, I'm imagining yeah. that like one of one of Johnny Speed's like young, young relatives is just like, oh, that's a volcano. Mm. And that's just the end of the speed fair. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the last speed to ever have speeded. I don't the know. Final speed. Also, there's there's so many speed force jokes I want to make. So mm. many. And I just can't. Mm. I really wanted to name your character Barry and go in on it, but <laughs> that oh wouldn't be a gosh. good facilitator, Pat. <laughs> Um, yeah, because I was thinking about the that legend too. Because I feel like if they were going to rise or be upset, like we have depleted this land completely. Mm -hmm. Like, if it didn't already happen, it it would have happened yep. sooner than later. And yep. and it might even be like there's a little bit of hit or miss. It's like and it's like ah, we got this back, and it's like uh, and some people are like well, we drive it into the ground like we do with the seep. And other people are like, why don't we throw it back into the volcano? And people are like, but we throw ourselves at the volcano. And so like people are trying different <laughs> things. And, but how about this? Instead of it being contentious and everybody, it's like, you know what? We don't know. And and everybody tries some and it everything does chill out. So there's a little bit of wrangling about we were right, we did it, but yep. nobody really knows. And some people walked in. I think the tradition of people being like going in after death, that's sort of a sort of an old an old cadre, like instead of being buried in the ground, you are you your body goes in, which of course, uh old McGillicuddy, being a traditionalist and an older man, was thrown into the volcano after his death, his body. That's where the funeral happened. Um, and I'm not saying that before the, you know, like in our after credit scene, that you see McGillicuddy climbing out of the volcano afterwards. But I am saying that the children, when they tell stories about old man McGillicuddy, who could go invisible at least once mm -hmm. a week. Once a week. Um, who apparently was a amazing lover and linguist. Um, um, uh, they do say that sometimes they, they say that, that after everyone was, it was the, the rods were thrown in and, and the volcano cooled and whatever, then 
you know, he comes out sometimes at night and he speaks with the voice of the spirit of the island and truly they've taken his body and they tell all of those stories. I like, I like leaving that. That's this, what they Love talk that. about. Uh, yeah. Um, this was even more fun than I hoped it would be. Uh, Lexi, I could not have hoped for a better opportunity to like meet you. <laughs> I'm so glad that like this is the first thing we got to do together. I hope yes. it's not the last. Absolutely not. <clears throat> um, and I'll say straight up with witnesses here, if you ever need me for anything, like ping me. Like you, you've yeah. done me such a, a kindness coming in today. Um, he doesn't even do that for me. What the hell? <laughs> You have to be here, and you're full time employee yeah, again. You're, I, wait a second. I, do, I do have a hard out as of two minutes ago. We, so we, I am gonna we chain you to that chair. Um, so uh, thank you so much, Lexi. Thank you, Aaron. The fabulous Julia. Everyone, remember if you enjoyed oh this gosh, and you want us amazing. to do more of this in the future, go over there. Also, we're adding things to the fundraiser constantly. So even if you're not sure, hit follow. It's only seven days, and if you miss it, then you'll be sad. Um, one of the things we'll probably be doing is is making these maps available for mm. sale, either as posters. Maybe we'll do a compilation. Maybe they'll be like little postcards um, and we'll be selling them hopefully alongside the actual quiet year game. But we'll be adding that later. We really want to make sure that we get that perk perfect before we throw it out to you. Uh, but if you want a chance at that when it comes, go ahead and do that. Um, one last time, Lexi, uh, where can people find you and doing doing what? Where would you like people to tune in to the coolness that is you? Yes. Um, first, thank you so much uh, for doing this. This is so much fun. I've been waiting to play The Quiet Year, and I can finally do it and say that I did it on an amazing stream in an amazing world with you all um if you want to find me doing foolish things and also very fun things my name's lexi otherwise known as the black girl mage you can find me on twitter and twitch under that same exact name um every tuesday starting this coming week um i am going to be uh essentially streaming D, &D world uh, world building prep and other things like that so if you like that kind of thing come hang out um other than that like I said, Twitter and Twitch is a big thing. Other, uh, I think the final thing, I have a D&D &D show dropping. It should be dropping sometime in August. Um, you know, you can go see it. It's an all-black HBCU-inspired Strixhaven campaign that I am the Dungeon Master for. So, oh, hell yeah. follow me on Twitter. You'll see when it drops if you follow me over there. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, uh, everybody, you know Aaron. He's excellent in 10,000 ways. Uh, Julia um is is the same you you know her and my name's pat rothfuss uh and and i thanks thanks for being here despite me uh i will uh i'll see y'all later and tune in because we're going to be doing this all week um and i will see y'all next time boop boop <laughs>